uh, all right, I'm going to go ahead and click start, and then it should be green, and we ought to be live, and I'll go ahead and double check, go over here and make sure, I don't know if it's still streaming. No, no, no. it's it, not. It'll be a new stream. It's yeah. dead. <clears throat> We've got a new stream going. There you uh, go. Yeah, we're we're streaming. Okay, let me just. Right, I'll, I'll listen because um, it'll pick up through the. I'll go check uh, and make sure. Yeah. Let me bring it up because it's we're, gonna pick up streaming. through your. Um, okay, let me just. Right, I'll, I'll thing, listen because yeah. um, it'll pick up through the. All right, just a second. Check and make sure. Here we go. Yeah, listening in. Pick up through your. Um, okay, I heard it. <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah, you're good now. Okay, so there's four people watching already. So somebody give me some feedback. Josh, Amy, everybody say hello. And, and somebody in the uh, side chat, let me know that the audio is good, please. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Buenos dias. Buenos dias. Buenos um, dias. You know, instead of asking me some fucking bullshit question like that, um, just give me some feedback, and then I'll be interested in responding to your audio. Is good. Thank you very much. So now the answer to your question is no, even if they offered. So now we can move on. Thank you for the feedback. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Hello, hello, Marie T. Haven't seen you in a while. Awesome. Hey, Marie. Cool. Okay, so we are up and running. We got our audio issues fixed. Thank you to Josh, particularly to Josh, because I am so unfamiliar with all these intricate settings in OBS, and I had some stuff set up that probably shouldn't have been set up. But hey, we are up and running, and we are live, so welcome. I will start again. Conspiracy or not, here we come for your listening displeasure, and just for the fun of it, I'll tell you what, I'm going to go ahead and run our intro again, because I can. So here we go. Okay, Josh, you said it looks fine. Amy, you said it looks weird. What's going on? Because the intro looked funny and choppy and pixely on my end. Yeah. So, now, it did a, a couple of times. Now, I would say that's just your bandwidth buffering. Um, but other than that, I mean, I thought it looked pretty good. Um, it sounded good. It was a, it was clipping just a hair. But other than that, I thought... And I've got, I've got really high-speed internet, so... You know, that's another thing there. Maybe after the upload is all done, maybe it'll smooth out, hopefully. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, usually it does, I think. Uh, there's definitely a learning curve to run an OBS. But uh, again, Josh, I want to thank you for all your help. And I will be picking your brain a little bit more to get my my OBS running a little bit better. But yeah, thanks, no bro. Thanks for all your help. I do appreciate you very much. And, and welcome, Josh, to, to the channel for the first time, by the way. Hello. Indeed. I'm glad to be here. Um Definitely, I've got I've got a little bit of time, but uh, I do have to run somewhat shortly to kind of get ready for my own little thing. But I'm definitely stoked to be here to hang out for the first time. Okay, so give me a give me a time frame when you need to leave so I can plan our discussion because I got a couple things I want to go over, and then I want to I want to rearrange our topics tonight so to, so as to give you time to say what you need to say, uh, particularly on the um, the deep fakes. But uh, mm -hmm. give, give me an idea when you need to I get have, out of here. I have 40 minutes that I, I really, that is my allotted time, really. Oh, shit. Um, really? Yes. Mm -hmm. Because I 
my when Aaron gets home, I have to get dinner and get ready for eight o'clock. Uh, because here's the other thing: we were going to start later, but we have to get up at eight o'clock in the morning to go be somewhere. So we're we're going to have to end it a little earlier than we normally do. So I'm kind of a, a little bit crunched for time, but it's no worries. Um, uh, uh, well, well, okay. Well, now I have to rearrange again. I wanted to cover Andy No first. And then you and I could have the rest of the evening until you had to leave to go over deep fakes. Mm -hmm. Maybe, um, since you've only got about 40, 45 minutes, maybe we'll just go ahead and jump into deep fakes first. I'll cover Andy No uh, later on because I've got like a page and a half worth of notes and some screen shares and videos I want to go over. And that's going to eat up most of your time. And I don't want to, uh, while I've got you here and you said you had, you know, an interest and you had some knowledge on deep fakes. So I want to pick your brain on that one. And, and I'm going to make use of that time. So let's go ahead and jump into, uh, let's just reverse the entire order of tonight's topics. Let's go straight into deep fakes. Um, I tell you what, while I'm setting up uh, screen shares or notes or whatever, uh, Josh, just take the floor. What do you What do you know? Just go ahead and give us an intro. What do you What do you know about deep fakes? What's What's the problem? All right, sure. Um, you know, I've been interested in artificial intelligence and and all sorts of tech along those lines, and deep fake, Neuralink, all this stuff is interconnected to what I think is a uh, we're headed towards this kind of even more digitized reality to where. You, you really can't believe anything that you see any longer at all um, because they can just deep fake it. And there's a channel that I actually ran into uh, somewhat recently con called uh, Control Shift Face. And it's just a guy that makes deep fakes for fun. He makes, uh, you know, his most recent one that I saw was uh, Elon Musk in 2001 Space Odyssey as Dave and uh, talking to Hal. And it, it's... It's uncanny, the level of just one guy doing it for fun. Now, basically how they do it at this point is they take pictures or, or take pictures from the Internet from all angles and scan. So you have like a, a 360 degree angle of this person's head. And then through some kind of crazy computer processing that I'm not really sure how it all works. Um, it Basically, you can put another person's face on uh, like the you, you could take your face and put it on anybody else's body and make it look real in video. Um, and really my concern with this is if some guy can do it just for fun, then uh, what, what are the people that uh, have the real power and the real money? What are they doing with this technology? And what are their plans with it? Uh, that's, that's kind of, my <clears throat> you know, I remember after nine 11, after it wasn't immediately after, because I was, in 2001, when 9-11 happened, I was still pretty much asleep, like most people. And it wasn't until around 2004 where I really had my eyes opened and really got into this whole world of rabbit hole and muck raking and all that, you know, research community. And I remember having a conversation with uh, a friend of mine, and I was saying to them, you know, if you remember... On the news, the airplane that went down in Shanksville, Pennsylvania, that's the one where the passengers supposedly, you know, got some balls and they took over and they fought the terrorists and they tried to take control of the plane and it crashed into the ground instead of going to the to the White House where it was supposed to go, right? Mm -hmm. um, on that airplane, I think it, I'm pretty sure it was that airplane. I might be wrong. It could have been another airplane. I think it was the Shanksville plane. That it it has been said that uh, and reported that somebody on the plane called their mom, and there's there's a um, a voicemail recording, and the guy calls his mom and she doesn't answer the phone. He gets the voicemail and he says, "Mom, this is forgive me. I forget the guy's name. Let's just say Joe Smith." generic name okay he says mom this is joe smith and it's funny because he he mentions his last name now mm -hmm. question to everyone on the panel everyone within the sound of my voice ask yourself this question have you ever 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 gotten your mom's voicemail and said this is michael Shermer. this is you know Christopher Hitchens, this is 
blah, 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 last name, blah, blah, blah. Never. Do you ever identify yourself to your mom by first and last name ever? Even on a voicemail, ever? No. No, it's not normal. People don't do that. So I was having this conversation with a friend, and I was saying, you know, after this is post 9-11, after I started waking up and shit, I was like, you know, and I pulled my phone out of my pocket. This is around 2004, 2005. And I said, you know, we've already got the technology in our pockets that if I wanted to, I could download an app and make my voice sound like yours. And most people who are paying attention are already aware that government, military, even, you know, private corporations, they have they have technology far in advance that to what is, you know, uh, provided to the government or to the to the public. Right. So we all accept that the powers that be are well in advance to whatever the hell you and I are tinkering with right now. Indeed. So this is this is literally, you know, 20 years ago, 2001, 18 years ago. Is it reasonable that somebody had called someone else's mother, created a voice recording on a voicemail on a recording machine? on an answering machine and said, hi mom, this is so-and-so, so-and-so. And because of the fact that someone else was actually making the phone call, that it was an error on their part to identify themselves by first and last name, like a Freudian slip. Yeah. Could very well be. Because it doesn't make any sense. You don't call your mom and say, hi, this, hi mom, this is Joe Smith. I just want to let you know my plane's going down. I love you very much. You don't yeah. do, you don't do no. that. No. No. Hey, Mom, this is Dawn. I love you. I love you, Mom. This is Dawn. See you later. See you in heaven, Mom. You don't say this is Dawn Integral. You don't say this is, you know, first and last name. It's very bizarre. Yes. I mean, to, to be real, I wouldn't even say my name. I'd just say, hey, Mom, it's me. You know, like, Right. Yep. Yeah, yep. most people would do that. Exactly. Yeah. Um, no, that's, that's can, interesting. Can I bring up something that came up? To mind and I was trying to interject not realizing I was muted um, you were mentioning Elon Musk and you know somebody putting his face on something mm -hmm. and, and I was watching this recent uh, test of his rocket vehicle which you know it's highly archaic knowing what I know sure but I kept looking at it and thinking that looks almost real. That was my impression. I don't think it was real. I mean, the only thing is with that is, you know, there's people actually there to witness that in real life. Like, you can go to these launches. Um, you know, that's okay. that's kind of well. my thing with it, you know. Um you know, I don't think we're quite at that augmented reality state yet. I think it that kind of ties into Blue Beam with you know, I think that's really what Blue Beam is about, augmented reality. I don't think it's to project holograms in the sky as much as it is to uh, manipulate masses kind of thing, um, especially mm -hmm. as we get further along and everything becomes a, a screen, everything's smart connected. You know, I think I don't think 5G is as dangerous as they say it is, other than the fact that it is it's going to create like a grid of everything. You're going to be able to see this or that. Everything's more uh, interconnected with itself. Um and this is where, where we're heading, which is what's freaky, because you look at, I don't know if you guys are aware, uh, just an example of something people are joking about now, uh, this thing called Face App, where you can take a picture of yourself and it'll show what you look like when you're going to, it'll show you when you look like 60 if you're my age, you know, and it's, uh, or mm -hmm. you can do it reverse and you can make it look like when you were a kid. And it, the, the younger pictures that I've seen, it's like uncanny how, how good it is. And it's just an instant. It takes like 30 seconds to do the whole thing. Now, you're, you're talking about just some app. Whereas what that that's my concern is like, how far are they going to go? I mean, and do, I thought you were going to bring up something with 9-11 that I thought might have been obvious. I don't know what to believe, but even the airplanes, like, like, could that not have been a, a deep fake kind of well, thing? In a, actually, I'm pretty sure that it was some kind of holographic technology because when they... <clears throat> examined the uh, radar data for that day from the public, 
and compared it to the radar data from the military, there was a plane that was flying on the military radar that was like about, uh, I don't know, something, I forget the exact distance, but it was like same path movement, but it was offset by about 500 feet or 500 yards or something like that. Mm -hmm. There was no planes going into the buildings on the military radar, but they had this plane that wasn't on the public in the same trajectory. And we know, I mean, they've admitted that they have the ability to project a hologram some distance away from a plane that is basically a copy of the plane so that it can confuse the enemy and I think that that's what they used. Check this. Was, was this hologram projection from the military plane. Check this out. Maybe you guys have seen this. This is a, a deep fake that was done. That's Control Shift Face. That's, that's his channel. Okay, so you're already familiar with this, Josh. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I'm, I'm not. That's the, that's the guy that I follow. He, he does all kinds of these. Um, yeah. And if that's... That there's a particular guy that does it. Control shift face. He does them all. Yeah. So there's a video. I'm only showing screenshots, but this is like happens in real time on video. And this is I forget the guy's name. He's a comedic actor. He's being interviewed on Conan O'Brien. And anybody interested, you can find this. Um, and if you look on the left, you see his real face. And on the right, it looks like Arnold Schwarzenegger. And a little backstory: He was actually doing an Arnold Schwarzenegger impression. That's right. That's right. And in, and in real time, his face shifts to that's, Arnold Schwarzenegger. That's right. And in real time, in the video, without even noticing, and I and I can show you the video, and you can't even fucking tell. I played it in slow motion, and you can't tell. Now, but also to add to this, because this is where a lot of people get confused. This was not aired on TV. No, no. This was, this was but some people have confused that. So I just want to make it clear out there. This wasn't on actual TV as, as a thing there. It's a guy, Control Shift Face, who makes these. Right. And he takes clips. Yeah, yeah. So there's YouTube videos. There's channels out there with people who are very tech savvy, who have this technology and this, these, this you know, in, in deep AI software. And I, I, I hate to use the word AI because that involves a whole, opens a can of worms in the realm of like quantum computing. That's what AI is supposed to be is quantum computing. And I don't know if it's really AI per se, or maybe it's just high tech. Okay. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, I have a problem with using the word AI when it comes to this stuff. It's self-learning. That's a, I'd say a good, um, term for it self we, uh, we could also use the term just simply high tech because ai because this isn't really a self learning this is somebody who's just manipulating video software or video the, editing the thing is the software does it all on its own um it, it creates those images it's not necessarily people doing it you can plug this in there's websites that you can have do it on their servers and it just it takes a lot of server power but if you have the server power and you have the uh a processing power you can make these yourself and it's like a plug and play kind of thing you put this in with all these images and all the background and then it, it configures it on its own so it's so you're it's, so you're saying that ai does have something to do with this well it's self-learning in, in that it kind of makes itself and, and it can trick us um in that way so it's it's not ai in a general ai sense that it's a, a sentient being but it is artificial intelligent um well, well, AI in, involves uh, a computer program software that is a self-learning software. So uh, I don't know if this is necessarily a self-learning software, but it, it could just simply be, I'm thinking, just simply a very high-tech software. It doesn't necessarily have to be a self-learning AI, artificial intelligence. Now, are they just now saying that they're rolling out these deep fakes uh, just recently? Uh, yeah, well, it's become a thing within the last couple of year or two. Yeah. yeah, because I was first made aware of these deep fakes maybe about, uh, yeah, about two years ago now, uh, through 4chan. And from what I know about it, basically anyone can create these deep fakes. And so amateurs can alter photos, they can alter videos. Um, but it looks like this is a little more professional what we're looking at here. 
Um, but he, anyone can basically use these computer programs to create these deep fakes. Indeed, yeah. You don't have to be that special. You have to have some money and the power to do it because it, it's going to take a good bit of uh, processing power to make this stuff happen. I mean, if you you can watch how he makes them. He take. He has pictures from the internet, and it'll take like thousands of photos of this person from all angles, and then the the software puts it all together and makes it a movable thing. They've done it with the Mona Lisa too. They've also taken the Mona Lisa and animated it with deep fake technology. This is creepy stuff, guys. Because if you saw the image I put up on the screen a minute ago from um, CIA Director William Casey, mm -hmm. many of us have heard the quote. Yes. Yes. And I actually tracked down the, well, I didn't really go out of my way. I'm not going to claim credit for this. But I have the quote here from the original author, uh, Barbara Honecker. Oops. Yes, yes, Barbara Honecker. Um, she says, I am the source for this quote, which is indeed said by the CIA director, William Casey, at an early February 1981 meeting of the newly elected President Reagan with his new cabinet secretaries to report to him on what they had learned about their agencies in the first couple of weeks of the administration. The meeting was in the Roosevelt Room in the West Wing of the White House, not far from the cabinet room. I was presented at the meeting. I was present at the meeting as assistant to the chief domestic policy advisor to the president. Casey first told Reagan that he had been astonished to discover that over 80% of the intelligence that the analysis side of the CIA produced was based on open public sources like newspapers and magazines. As she did to all the other secretaries of her departments and agencies, Reagan asked um, what he saw as his goal as director for CIA, to which he replied with this quote, which I recorded in my notes at the meeting. Now, before I go back to the quote, I think it's extraordinarily important to point out right here, and I, I can't highlight it because it's, it's a screenshot, so it's not text. I can't, like, put the blue highlight. Right here in the middle of the screen, 80% of the intelligence that at the analysis side of the CIA produced was based on open public sources like newspapers and magazines. Now this to me echoes an old report given by John Rappaport, okay, the um, relatively well-known um, uh, researcher, author, um, investigative journalist John Rappaport, he, where he talked about the CIA um, and this also echo, echoes what Do Dr. Joseph Farrell said about uh, data correlation. And this is what disturbs me, data correlation. Because what the CIA will do, since the CIA owns some of the news outlets and they have people in high positions of power in the major news outlets, is that they will put out a news article or a news story. It's totally fake. And then they'll put it out there as a sidebar story and they'll see who picks it up and runs with it. This is data correlation. This is how they can tell how their operations are working properly. Hmm. Interesting. This, this is the disturbing part about this. So CIA Director William Casey says, we'll know our disinformation program is complete when everything the American public believes is false. And with this deep fake stuff going on, I would suggest that this is going one step further beyond what Casey has stated here. It's not just that what everything the American public believes is false, but I would suggest now that with the deep fake technology, it's more like we're entering a realm where nothing you see is believable. Well, here's the thing. If anyone can create these deep fakes, we got to imagine that, you know, that one looked okay, but... For example, like a lot of these guys about two years ago, when this program first came out of nowhere and people started uh, really using it and showing you how they're able to do these things, there were some pretty realistic deep fakes that were coming out. Um, on 4chan, a lot of people were sharing like a realistic uh, por porn uh, of like Emma Watson, like naked and whatnot. So... It was realistic pictures on 4chan, 
and that was two years ago, and that was just some amateur uh, jerk off uh, on 4chan. So, yeah, and, uh, go ahead, sorry. So, so I can only imagine how realistic some of these pictures are that and videos are that these guys uh, who develop these programs are able to produce. Mm -hmm. And see, here's another thing. Um, I think it goes back to that they were kind of preparing us for this with the the emergence of the word fake news, you know? Um, it, it's like, oh, that's just fake news. That's fake news. It's fake news. And then now with the added deep fake, it takes it again, raises the bar. I mean, and, and if you look at what Rufus is showing now, I mean, that's just, this is just some guy messing around. I mean, I'm sure this is a little bit more technically advanced and it's not perfect but how many people would that fool everybody only everybody yep and it, it e looks weird everybody it's... watching tv maybe not everybody who does video editing maybe not the super techie guys but literally everybody at home watching their fucking television is going to be fooled mm -hmm. by this legit yeah. there would be youtube videos of people uh claiming that this is a fake George W. Bush, and they would have maybe like 200 views, and people would stumble across the video calling him a maniac. Yeah, and be like, shut up, you're crazy. Yeah. But it's, it's yeah, so we're it's a crazy <laughs> world, you guys. Uh, it's hard to believe almost anything you see on TV. At this point, this is a scary proposition, and this is why I titled tonight's show, We Got Serious Problems. Because we're now entering a realm where the technology is such that we're, we're entering a world where literally nothing you see anymore is going to be believable. Like nothing. Not, not unless you're right there, flesh and blood. Exactly. <laughs> and then, but then, that uh, I think it's going to go there soon enough. And see, this is the thing. I, don't, I think they've planned a lot of this stuff for a long time. I think the technology's been around a lot longer than than we think it has. I think oh, I'm sure of it. <laughs> they milk they milk this stuff out. It's just the right time that it could work better. I mean, I think uh, a lot of the old transhumanists kind of predicted this age. I mean, even Orwell, he predicted this time. If, if you look at the technology, it's... Well, I think that some of that was predictive programming. And indeed. They, but, they, this is where they knew they were going to take it. But that's the point. They knew what they were... It was, it's been a long game plan. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is the creepiest part, because now we're entering a realm where everybody, every, like, what's happening in the news right now, right? Jeffrey Epstein is, like, all over the news. Everybody's talking about the whole Epstein debacle, saga, you know, was he suicided? Did he kill himself? Did someone kill him? And then there's a whole other group of people like myself who was saying, wait a minute, do we even know if he ever made it to fucking prison or not, right? Do, do we even know that any of the Epstein saga is real or maybe it's a script right. from the get-go? Exactly, right. Now, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what I us and, and they put this guy out as the Epstein character. Well, well no, what I think I is going to happen. Highest probabilities. But but here's the thing: if I I kind of have my thumb on the pulse of just like I look around at a lot of things, and a lot of people are really it, it, the Epstein kind of stuff is getting a lot of traction, which is concerning to me because it implicates if it, it just I, I don't ever use any of the kind of words that are involved in what Epstein did, but uh, if you look around, it's implicating all of these officials, all of these people, all these famous people, politicians in the same crimes, and. Here's the thing. I think that it it's gonna they're gonna have to have another big event to to wipe it under the rug because it's always ADD. They're never gonna let it catch traction. They're gonna do something else bigger that's gonna make everybody forget about it. And I think that's that's somewhat short term. Well, what bothers me about this technology is that like let's just let's just take the Epstein saga for instance. Now whether or not Epstein is dead or whether or not he's been whisked away to Israel or on an island, his, a separate island that no one knows about, you know, he's, he's, he's been reassigned and he's in, you know, hiding of somewhere. Because yeah. uh, honestly, I have no reason to believe the guy ever even went to jail. That's, that's my opinion. Mm -hmm. I agree. I mean, they said, yeah, he's in jail. Okay. They can tell us that all they want yep pretty much 
So I have no reason to believe the guy ever even spent a day in jail. Maybe maybe they handcuffed him for the cameras, and they took him into the jail cell, and then out the back door, off to the fucking Israel island, or wherever the fuck he went. Okay? Don't know, don't care. Mostly. I, I, honestly, I, I really don't know, and so therefore I don't have much of a reason to care. But since you don't know. Now, yeah. what we have is, what we have is, is the leftover remnants of, we have all these uh, supposed victims... And I don't want to poo-poo anybody who was a victim, okay? I feel deeply sorry for anybody who was a victim. But we have all these people coming forward saying, well, this Giselle or whatever her name was, this female that was helping him, um, all these people coming forward saying, I was a victim, this, then I was a victim. Look, bottom line is Epstein is dead, so we're not going to have a trial. So all the people in his black box or his black book, they're, all those names, they're never going to come out in trial. All right. Well, now we have this story of, of Prince Andrew resigned and whatnot. So maybe that's the end of the road. But the problem I have is with all this deep fake technology, if we, now we're in a world where deep fakes are well known around the world, everybody knows. And let's just say that uh, a video comes out that shows, I don't know, Bill Clinton raping a young girl in Epstein's island, uh, literally on, in his mansion on the island. Like, let's just say that that happens. And a video comes out, or or let's just say a video comes out with Clinton enters the, the mansion on Epstein Island, re followed by a young girl, or whatever. Something like that. All, the, all, all, all they have to do, they meaning the government, they meaning the powers that be, all they have to do is say, well, this is deep fake. This is, this is video. Exactly. That's the key yeah. of it all, because yeah. now they can get away with anything. That's, oh, that's deep. That's right. why we're in serious fucking trouble, bro, yep. because nobody's going to believe shit anymore. Yep. It's well, true. here's the thing, you know, like this information's all come out about Jeffrey Epstein. It came out that, you know, I think it was Trump's commerce secretary uh, was like the guy who got him out of jail. Uh, you know, he's in bed with all of these people. Uh, you name them, uh, Epstein's uh, worked with them. And the thing is, you know, th that news story maybe about two weeks ago was pretty big. I, I have seen, you know, uh, the tabloids, uh, Jeffrey Epstein's face. But really, it's starting to die down already. And it's just going to be another forgotten thing that, oh, yeah, your politicians are uh, fucking children uh, on some tropical island somewhere. Oh, what are you going to do? You know? Yeah, I actually saw I was at the grocery store the other day and I saw on the cover of National Enquirer was Jeffrey Epstein. I think that's what I saw. Yeah. yeah. So Gandalf, weren't you there in it was a live stream? I think I was talking to I might have been Zero stream or somebody like that. I think you were there when I said now that Epstein is, you know, claimed to be dead that this whole thing is just going to whitewash and it's the whole the whole news cycle the whole story is just going to go away yeah and you're seeing that already it's already happening um, yes wash rinse repeat that yeah, was yeah. that was only a week week and a half ago when i said that now well, yes and no i mean but it, it has gone away in a lot of ways but in the the kind of reddit communities and whatnot it is still thriving and it's actually getting a lot of people are talking about like the, there's uh, Aaron's in a little conspiracy uh, subreddit, and she said that since this happened, it went from like ninety thousand up to nine hundred thousand people in this thing. So it's really, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and they're all talking about Epstein. Well, I heard today, or maybe might have been yesterday. I heard today that now we have two cameras that have malfunctioned. Mm. <laughs> just, just happened to malfunction at the same time at a critical moment. With the most high-profile prisoner ever, uh huh. Since sure. since, since Jeffrey Dahmer, <laughs> since since Charlie Manson, the All most right. high-profile prisoner since Charlie Manson or Jeffrey Dahmer, the the most high-profile prisoner of the century. Oh, I'm sorry, our cameras failed. Yeah, just right. Just like they failed on Seven Seven in London. Just like they failed every fucking where else where it's critical, where somebody of high position of power would be implicated, 
just like every fucking time. Yep. But no, but no. If you're a plebe, if you're a dirty washed mass motherfucker, and you're walking down the street in Mexico, mind you. And now I'm going all the way back to the affluent kid, if you guys remember. This this rich kid who was drunk and killed some girl and he was let off because he was known as the affluent kid because he was from an affluent family and they let him off because he did, he he was from such a rich family he just didn't understand the rules of society you know that kind of right, bullshit right right and then him and his mother fucking disappeared to mexico and you know how they were caught does anybody know how they were caught no clue they were in Mexico. They walked into a fucking sandwich shop in some dirt town, literally with dirt road. I think there was a dirt road. It was like some small fucking nowhere town in the middle of Mexico in a sandwich shop. And you know how they were caught? They were caught on three fucking video cameras. Three. Three fucking video cameras in the middle of fucking nowhere in Mexico. They were wow. caught. That's how they were caught. Yep. Oh, right. Three video cameras in the middle of fucking next Mexico. We got the affluent kid. Got him. But no. Jeffrey fucking Epstein, the most high profile motherfucker this fucking century. And we cannot put a few dollars into making sure that there's a pair of eyeballs on this motherfucker 24 hours a day. Nope. Can't do it. Sorry. Fail. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's so much uh, about this that just should send up anybody looking into it. It should send up hundreds of red flags. You know, I don't even think that by and large, the majority of people really believe the official story. Even I just think that people are so conditioned to this point where they will just go along with it. What am I going to do? I got to go to work in the morning. Right. Um, yeah. What am I going to do about the fact my uh, president and the former president and the guy who I pay, I'm paying my mortgage to that runs this bank are fucking children on some fucking tropical island? What am I going to do? You know, and it's it's just so people are just they've just come to this point of acceptance, really. You've yeah. nailed it right there. That that's kind of like one of the main points of it all, which is why I don't think it's it, anything can be changed, is because. You're talking about all these people with all these things and they're the, the, the for like children that rely on them. They have to go to work every day. They like just lives in general um, and what it takes to live in society and, and how they're so enslaved to it that how could at this point anybody ever, ever get away from it? And, and really, I think it's only going to get worse with this modern technology. I mean, you know, Walmart's been doing it for years with the facial recognition. It's. They've already got us all database. Like we're, we're all in that file. There's one in every single one of us. Um, and it's like a Google of people. And, and hey, I'm, I'm waiting for the day when uh, I'm going to see video, like grainy, blurry video come up of uh, you roof and uh, you undenied uh, sticking up a bank and getting <laughs> yeah. Really? And, yeah. Yeah. And then it will show your two mug shots of two deranged uh, conspiracy theorists that <laughs> wanted to steal from some big bank in the States or something like that. And you know, what's funny though, is like, I, at this point, I think I've removed myself from being a threat in any way. I don't, it's like, I don't, I don't get into the conspiracy stuff anymore, man. Like I like this deep face stuff. It's not really conspiracy. It's like, what's going on. I, it's accepted knowledge that this stuff is you you could show it to somebody and then but, other than that it's speculation but still the majority of people that will come across any type of information like this will still oh god it's a conspiracy theory uh, mm -hmm. I yeah I, I don't believe that my politicians are crooked i i believe that trump is fighting against the deep state is what they're <laughs> <laughs> deep state deep fake uh-oh yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it's uh, it's, you know, I think we're we're in a in a weird time in life, and I don't really uh, know where where we're headed. Um, but I, you know, that's the thing. And I'm kind of my time is wrapping up, so you know, I'll just kind of say a couple of closing things. Um, you know, I don't know where the hell this world is going. I, I'm witnessing a lot. I've seen a lot of change in the past five to six years, and. Uh, I would have never thought we would have been here this quick five or six years ago. Um, 
and and yet it still seems so stagnant like we're sitting still and treading water so it's kind of like i i don't know what to think anymore and I, i've kind of just accepted that i have to just focus on on the life that i'm, I'm trying to do like I, you know at the same kind of like you were mentioning gandalf that uh um people have you know they got to get up and go to work in the morning i mean at the same time it's like accepting with that while knowing at some point in time uh it comes into into play you know i think a lot of people look away from it whereas i try to just say i can't know what's going to happen um i can think about it talk about it but i can't ever let it upset me or make me freak out or have a bad day because at that point they're winning too how much more time you got dosh i've got about four minutes <laughs> four minutes yeah, I promised Aaron that I would be off by seven so we could have dinner. So, all right, I'm gonna pop out the chat so that I can keep an eye on it. I'm inviting fellow man. If fellow man wants to come in here and hang out, so we could talk about uh, Lancaster and maybe I don't know what fellow man knows about this character Andy No. I've got some notes on this butthole Andy No that I wanted to go over. Um, but if uh, fellow man, I know he wants to talk about Lancaster, and I know he's been itching to talk to me about uh, New Zealand. And just to let you know, fellow man, uh, New Zealand, I'm, I'm totally open to talk to you about New Zealand, just not tonight. I've got stuff on my on my plate, and I've got notes and things I want to cover that I plan on. Um, you don't know much about Lancaster. Um, you stop by in a few. Okay, uh, fellow man, um, I'm going to see if I can add you to the Hangout, um, see if I can get you the link, or maybe I'll just drop it. I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll add him to this Hangout. Um Okay, tell you what, well, I, I know I'm an old man with a cell phone. Help me out, mm -hmm. Josh, because I tried this earlier, because um, I tried to add Gandalf, and I couldn't find his icon, and I don't, didn't know his email. So when I click the three buttons, uh, full screen chat, uh, no, that's, that's the yeah, other no, I can't, that's the other. I can't add him here either, because I can add his old channel, but I can't add... Uh his new one because i don't have him in my contacts you mean gandalf no i was talking about a uh fellow man yeah fellow man oh so gandalf's not in here in the actual chat either no actually i gave gandalf the link in skype because i couldn't figure out how to oh. add him into the hangout okay yeah um well here i can add gandalf well you don't I have to he's already in here yeah oh. he's he's already in well i meant like that way when the hangout ends that he's still in a hangout that you could chat in kind of thing. Like it could be every time you go live with Conwick, you could use the same exact hangout. Oh, okay. You don't have to make a new one. I mean, it's up to you. I, I so how did, okay. So, oh, all right, look, so just, just for fun, help me out here. When I click the people, um, I get, this is, I'm not screen sharing, but you should be able to see my screen, right? Yeah. yeah I know what you're talking about. Um, yeah. And there, Okay, so go to the top right three buttons. Yeah, I did that. Yeah, click it. Um, all right, so now hold on. Go back then, get get into the R's. Uh, let me see here. People, options, close. People, yeah, go to people. It yeah, should be uh, there. People, he's not add there. Add people on the bottom right. Bottom right, add people. Mm -hmm. and there you go. Boom, you can add anybody. Except this is the only list that I have. So Gandalf is not on the list here. Oh, I got you. See what um, I'm saying? So I can yeah, add, you'd have to have I can add email. fellow man live. In fact, boom, he's already added. But that's that's his old account. His uh um you know, he he's his channel got taken down, so he's got was a new it Fellow Man there. Live was taken down? I don't yeah, know. He, I don't know which one is he running on right now. Fellow Mon. Mon. Oh, yeah, fellow Mon. Mon. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I don't know how to add that. Yeah, I don't. I so don't I can this, drop but... the link in the in the in the live chat. Yeah, but then that's the other way. Yeah, you could still do that. But I I just went ahead and added Gandalf, so he's actually in the hangout now. So. Uh, okay, so how did you add? Cause, what? Because he's already on your little list. Con yeah, he's already on my list. Okay, so, so I don't know how to. I, I need his Google email to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, guys, my time is about wrapped up. Josh. Yeah. Fellow man says his his uh, old one is still good for hangouts. Oh, okay, well there you go. He's in here then. Oh, is he in here? Well, I mean he's in in the hangout. He was added. So fellow man, he said his old channel works for 
Um, yeah, I, I added Fellow Man Live to the Hangout. So if, yeah. if FM Live is still good, then Fellow Man, you can pop in anytime you're ready to come. Uh, Josh is going to duck out, and we're going to move on to other topics here in a second. But yeah, uh, hey, thanks for having me on. Um, you're welcome to stop by later if you want to. Uh, we'll probably be a couple minutes past eight or so, but we we can't run as long as we normally do, everybody. So so, <laughs> so in about an hour for you because you're an hour behind me. Yeah, so in about an hour from now, we're we're gonna be on. All right. Well, I'll try to wrap. I'll try to wrap this up in an hour. I'll, I'll, we'll try not to cross streams, but uh, we might go a little bit over time. And I'll definitely. Hey, it's cool. I, I'm, I'll definitely be interested in hanging out with you when we get done with this. Yeah, absolutely. So cool. So, fellow man, if you want to jump in here and talk about Lancaster, if you know anything about it, or because honestly, right. Josh, hey, hey, and Josh, before you go, thank you, brother. Mm-hmm. I, I'm I was pleased to have you with us tonight. Oh, yes. absolutely. Th- thanks thank- for having me on. Thank you so much. Yep, and I'm glad you got your stream running nice, man. Good good deal. So I'll uh, catch you later, Roof. Uh, special thanks to you for that. So bravo. Peace out, guys. Be good. Gandalf. Um, Gandalf <clears throat> might be making dinner. Uh, he's on mute right now. Yep. But um, Gan, I know he's listening, and he might be running back and forth between the grill and and whatever he's doing to get his dinner going. <clears throat> so, Amy, what do you what do you think about this fucking deep fake stuff going on right now? Well, uh, it's I'm I'm in a sort of a wait and see what happens. Meanwhile, I'm doing my work. Um, <laughs> what what do you? I mean, do you? Can you see the the issues, the potentials, and, oh, absolutely. and the, the implications I, that we were bringing forward? Absolutely. It, it's like anything that's on video, somebody can challenge. That's not me. I wasn't there. Right. So, yeah. Cool. Um, fellow man said 15 minutes. Cool. So we'll have fellow man on here in a minute. Awesome. Which, which will be another first for uh, our little hangout. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, cool. So, uh, despite the differences fellow man and I have had in the past, we have made amends and we are friendly and we've been communicating and I'm pleased to have fellow man on to discuss these things. Um, him and I have plenty of differences and we can work that out on another time. But uh, as per our topic for this evening, I think it would be interesting to have fellow man on, especially when we go to cover the Lancaster event which i'm actually looking forward to getting into even though i really don't have any notes on lancaster i've got a bunch of notes on andy no what do you know about andy no amy uh i know that he uh is a quote journalist unquote and that he's been accused of faking some things and uh he's uh super right wing I don't think he's super right wing I think he's more of one of these uh, mega hat types you know the uh, Mike Cernovich um, Jack Posobiec Stefan Stefan Molyneux type right right well okay maybe not super uh, what I read the article that I read about him seemed to indicate that he was very right wing yeah, so that's that, that's just an exaggeration. They'll say that he's like an Asian uh, guy, uh, basically. That's really into the whole uh, build the wall type stuff. Okay. So he's really not um, right wing at all. I would say he's more like a centrist, kind of like Trump and the rest of the mega hats. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so I think what. Uh, I'm not sure where Roof is going with this, but I'm pretty aware. I know that uh, Andy Nago was on, uh, what's his name? Uh, oh, my God. I, I can't believe uh, the Joe Rogan podcast. Yes. Yes, I, I read a bit about that, saying that he was. Yeah, so I'm not uh-huh. looking forward to see where Roof is going with this. Yeah. Uh, I, oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Okay, so this guy Andy No, let me let me. I got some notes here on this lovely character. 
Okay. Okay, so he's a gay Asian activist journalist. A gay Asian activist journalist. None of which I have a problem with. I don't care if you're gay. I don't care if you're a journalist. I don't care if you're an activist. And I don't care if you're a fucking Asian. I don't really care. Me either. So he's got this background baggage. Gay activist Asian journalist. Okay, so he's not a white guy. He's not a regular Joe Hoser. He's an he's a journalist. He's an activist, and he also happens to be Asian, and he also happens to be homosexual. Who fucking cares? Now let's get into who the hell this guy really is. Andy, no, this is the guy. Let me see. My, let me just double check my notes because there's a there's a piece of a video I want to play to show. But this is I want to try to start from the beginning. I have to work my way backwards. So bear, bear with me as I scan through my notes here. Um, the Sargon at 225, uh, I don't think it's here, I have to go, let me see if I can find, I don't have a tab ready, do I? Get to know Grifter, nope, that's the, I want to play that later. Let's go Sargon. Let's, because I want to play, only, I'm only playing this because I, I know it'll get me to the little clip that I want to show about that because Sargon has something to say about Andy No. And Sargon goes after David Pakman. Now I'm not defending this video. I'm not defending David Pakman. Let me mute this just in case. Uh, I think it's two minutes and twenty five seconds. Right about here. This is what we all saw I don't know, was it a month or two months ago? Coming up, here it is. There, center screen, the guy right here where my mouse is. He's already been smacked. He's already covering his face. I'll play the video. This is Andy No center screen with the backpack, the black backpack. He's being attacked by a group of Antifa. And I'll play this for a moment. We've all seen this, I think. There he is. And then bang. He gets spr he gets kicked, he gets punched, he gets milkshaked, he gets from behind. Watch this, watch, throwing, bang. See the way it bounced off? Let me play that again, because this is an integral part of the story. Watch the guy who walks up behind and he throws up something from behind, right here. Boom! See how it bounces off of him? I'm gonna play that one more time and I'll try to slow it down. Yeah, good thought. <clears throat> Watch this again. He gets kicked. He, boom. Someone kicks him. Kicks him in the stomach. He's getting sprayed. He's getting milkshake. Silly, silly stringed, yes. He's getting punched. Right here. This guy right here. Watch. Watch. Right here. Watch how he throws. Now watch how it bounces. Right there. Boom. See how it bounced? Yeah. Okay. The reason it bounced... I'm going to get into this in a second. The thing that he threw happened to be full of milkshake mixed with quickcrete, which is concrete. Wow. Okay. That's why it bounced the way it did. And I will play this one more time. Here it is right here. Watch. He throws it. Coming up. Throw. Bounce. See the way it bounced? And it didn't splatter? Did no. You, did you notice that? Yep. Because it was hardened. That makes sense. Because these fuckers were mixing quickcrete in with their milkshakes to make them harder, thicker, more solid, more dangerous when they throw them. Okay. I would argue that Antifa is probably more so brainwashed than even the Megapede uh, Trump supporters at this point. Well, yeah, aren't they the first on the scene? Wasn't Antifa the first group of organized, violent protesters that we saw? Yeah, well, I think that Antifa is basically a re-evolution or it's kind of like a switch up of the Black Bloc, um, which was a protesting group back in like the mid-early 2000s. Um, there's that famous video that came out of Montreal, I believe, where 
these three guys with rocks, bandanas, um, fucking, like, the whole getup. They look identical to modern Antifa. How they were basically outed as being cops because this one guy in the crowd who was, like, a teacher or a professor at this anti-government, uh, um, anti-New World Order uh, protest back in Montreal back in, I think it was, like, 2003 or four. And this guy's just like, these guys are cops, everybody. And uh, these guys started backing into the police line. They eventually were grabbed and uh, they were put with zip ties behind the police line. And there's really good video and analysis of these guys' boots all being identical. Like, these guys all had the same exact boots. Oh, going all the way back. You're talking about, like, oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I'm gonna find this video and I'm gonna share it right now. I know what I know exactly what you're talking about. I, I, I'm gonna say that I think that a, a large percentage of Antifa and several other groups are not what they say they are. Well, you guys are familiar with the Charlottetown, uh, Charlottesville, Charlottesville. Charlottesville. Yeah, North there, Carolina. There, yeah, there was a lot of video that came out that was analyzed uh, days after this all happened. A lot of these guys that showed up with flags, uh, of Nazi flags, if you look at the videos and you actually zoom in and look at these flags, these Nazi flags that these guys were flying were fresh out of the box. Yes. Yeah. Um, I'm convinced that a lot of these agitators were are they work in both sides. They are there to create um, these confrontations to entertain the mob, and yeah. you know well, they yeah. control both sides. Yeah, and that gives the reason that gives a pretense for the police to step in and you know crack skulls. Yeah, except the police know what's going on too. Of course. It's yep. all a show. It's, well, it's, with it's uh, Charlotte, yeah, with Charlottesville in particular, if you look at the organizer, he was actually a Bernie Sanders supporter during the 2016 or 15 election cycle. Um, and a year later, he's a hardcore uh, white nationalist organizing uh, a giant protest. Mm -hmm. About the, uh, I think it was like the Stonewall Jackson statue or the... Uh, Lee statue they were going to take down there in Virginia. I, I just, I think that all of these, uh, I think all these movements, I think all of this, all these people we see by and large that are central to these events, I think a lot of these people are just paid off shills. Oh yeah, I'm certain of it. I None of this is organic. None of it. Okay, so I follow a channel called TMM. M as in Michael, T-M-M, and he's an atheist, mostly an atheist channel. He, do, he very rarely does anything political, but he did cover Andy No, and he covered Andy No in such an amazing way. I, I think I probably have to play this video. It's six or seven minutes. I'll bump it up to 125 speed, um, but I think it's worth showing here. Um you guys, you have to hear this because I don't think I could say it any better. And I, and I have to point out that Sargon of Akkad came out against uh, David Pakman. Sargon made some good points. David Pakman did some poor reporting, but Sargon also got some things wrong. And I'm, I'm going to try and cover all of this. And forgive me if I skip or miss anything, but I'm going to do my best to show who's right and who's wrong. But for now, I'm going to play TMM. Uh, this channel right here that I'll highlight right here, if you're interested, this guy's amazing, TMM. Okay, and uh, I'm just letting you guys know I'm dropping the link to the video uh, where we have proof of RCMP, Royal Canadian Mounted Police, dressed up as black bloc protesters with rocks in their hands, uh, ready to start a riot. Oh, well, do you want me to show that first real quick? Uh, yeah, sure. Here, I'm going to just drop the link here. Do you want me to drop it in the Hangout chat or the, uh... uh drop, it in, drop it in the side on the Hangout chat and because I'm, I'm waiting for it right now. I'll, sh I'll share it or you can screen share. 
Right now, everything that's on my screen is being broadcast. So if you drop it and I open it, it's automatically being broadcast. Well, so. you're not you're not uh, screen sharing. Everything that everything that's on my screen should be broadcast. Are you on my channel? Uh, on the channel, yeah. Okay, I am. Everything that's on my screen right now should be broadcast. And I'm I know what Gandalf just dropped. I've seen this, but I'll play it. This is for old guys, grandmothers, grandfathers. Can you hear the audio? Mm, I've got to turn I mean, can you hear it on my channel? It should it should be broadcasting. Yes. Everything should yes. be broadcasting. So this guy is He's already identified some provocateurs. I didn't know this was Canada. See that? Put the rock down. Put the rock down. Watch this. When they get arrested, you can see the bottom of their boots. They want us to be, to be, uh, the guy just said they want us to be aggressive with them. Did you hear that? Mm-hmm. To be, they want us to be, to be, uh, 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 They want us to be aggressive with them. Now here is the RCMP squeezing into the lines of the police line here. And they're trying to put on a good show that they don't know each other. These three guys are cops. He just identified them. See your faces. Watch, they get arrested. They get arrested. Pretend, pretend arrest. And we get a shot of their boots. I know, I've seen this. There it is, right there. Boom, right there. You see the bottom of the guy's boot. And it's got that yellow. This is a terrible, like 780p. This is a terrible resolution. This is a pretty old video here that I'm sharing. I've seen the actual video itself that came out. It was much clearer back then. Yeah, so have I. So there they take uh they take their assets back into uh the fold. They probably got scorned by the police chief uh, about how badly they fucked up. We got a peaceful group of young brothers down there. Yeah, I've seen this Gandalf, and there's a there's a screenshot 
of one of those guys who's supposedly on the ground, supposedly being arrested. You can see the bottom of his boot. And then somebody compared that to the RCMP military issue boot. It's ex the exact same boot. It's got a yellow oval uh, emblem of the manufacturer. And you can see that it's like a government issue boot. I've actually, <laughs> I've seen this. Yeah, so so you're you're familiar with this. Well, this is just proof. This is proof that they have paid agitators, paid provocateurs. Sure. And, oh yeah. And if they're willing to insert them into actual real IRL protests, I know that these people are inserted into uh, the internet, into YouTube. You name it; these people are everywhere. Yes, they are. <laughs> Behaving unethically. All right, so I'm going to bump the speed up to 1.25. The guy already talks a little bit fast. Let me know if it's too fast for you to understand. I'll speed this up a slightly. I don't want to go too fast. But uh, this is TMM. Again, I'll just share. If anybody wants, I recommend you subscribe to this guy, TMM. He's really, really, 43,000 subscri subscribers. He's doing well already. He doesn't need my help, but he's a, it's a really good channel. The guy is, is he's pretty amazing. Um, and I'm just going to play this. This is his excerpt on Andy No. Here we go. Pay attention. Is an American journalist whose mission in life... Can you hear the audio? Andy No. I, I have to go to... Okay. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll open up the side chat. Everybody let me know if you can hear this, but pay attention. Everything that he says on screen... Is, will be typed out in the text form because that's just the way he rolls. So if you can't hear what he says, you'll at least be able to read it. So I'm going to go ahead and play this, and I'll check the, the side chat to make sure everybody can see well, and hear. He's an American journalist whose mission in life seems to be to portray the left in the most uncharitable and unflattering way possible. In service of this goal, he employs double standards, baseless claims, and outright lies. He first came to people's attention when he was fired from the Portland State University newspaper The Vanguard for quoting a Muslim student out of context in a tweet in such a way as to make it look like that student endorsed the death penalty for apostasy. In reality, the student simply mentioned the fact that this is the law in some Muslim countries and in no way endorsed such laws. Willamette Week, a Portland newspaper, quoted The Vanguard's editor as saying that Ngo was fired from the paper because his tweet summarized the panelists' remarks in a way that was unethical. Next, he wrote an article for the Wall Street Journal about Muslims in England that was full of nonsense. According to Business Insider, Ngo visits pockets of Muslims living in London to paint a picture of a terrifying and restrictive land governed by religious law, which is an absolute fabrication that must have required him to willfully ignore facts. Ngo wrote about the London neighborhood of Whitechapel that Muslims walked in one direction for Jumu'ah Friday prayer, while non-Muslims went the opposite way. Each group kept its distance and avoided eye contact with the other. A sign was posted on a pole, alcohol restricted zone. This implies that the alcohol restricted zone was there because it was a Muslim neighborhood. Business Insider says that, in fact, the alcohol-free zone outside the mosque is one of many all around the UK imposed by the elected government, not zealous Muslim overlords to prevent antisocial behavior such as drunkenness and public urination. In fact, there's a pub across the street from the mosque in Whitechapel. After police killed <laughs> Patrick Kimmons, an organization called Don't Shoot Portland had a march through that town in protest. According to Jacobin, there was one dicey moment during the march. A driver made an illegal right turn into protesters who were in a crosswalk and had a walk sign. A local TV station that recorded the incident wrote driver plows through protesters. The video shows a man stopping in front of a silver Lexus that then strikes him and pushes him for more than 30 feet. Down the block, a brief confrontation ensues with a protester shoving the driver once and others hitting his vehicle. The driver left in his car without any more incident as protesters yelled, get out of here. This incident was spun by conservatives as an Antifa attack against an innocent old man. Tucker Carlson did a show about it and invited Andy on to comment. Were those right-wing protesters, were those Republicans in the streets of Portland? They were not. Hmm, they were not. What, who were they, and what was the point of this, and how much coverage did it get in Portland, and did any civic or political leaders in Portland raise any kind of outcry about this, the violence? Some of the footage you showed was recorded over the weekend on Saturday by Brandon Farley, and that was a protest organized by Don't Shoot Portland, which is a Black Lives Matter type of group. They were protesting the police-involved shooting. Before anyone asks, he was born and raised in Oregon, so I have no idea why he sounds English. Recently, Andy has made a habit of spending a lot of time with far-right groups like Patriot Prayer and the Proud Boys. On May Day of 2019, Andy Ngo accompanied the far-right group Patriot Prayer to a bar in Portland called Cider Riot. A fight broke out between them and some of the patrons, ostensibly because some of them were associated with Antifa. Here's a video of Andy standing around these dudes while they're discussing their plans for fighting with the folks in the bar. There's a hundred of them there? I'll take the first three. 
Maybe. Let's go get a uh, beer and say fuck uh, it. Uh, huh? Okay. I know a lot about How many are there? If we yes. walked up in yes. there. They're all sitting there drinking and waiting. How many are there? They know we're coming because you put it on So Andy knows that these guys look an awful lot like they're planning violence, but when violence broke out, Andy blamed it on Antifa, as he will continue to habitually do. The bar leader filed a lawsuit against them. According to OPB, the lawsuit, filed by the owner of the cidery in May, alleges Gibson, Cooper, Lewis, and Kramer battered patrons, with Kramer cracking one woman on the head with a baton, knocking her unconscious. The woman who was assaulted suffered fractured vertebrae, and Andy decided to dox her. On June 29th, 2019, the Proud Boys, another far-right group, held a rally in Portland and Andy got punched in the head by left-wing counter-protesters. This was widely publicized and a GoFundMe page raised hundreds of thousands of dollars for him. Andy also got to go on Fox News again. First of all, uh, how are you doing tonight? Pay attention. What is the doctor saying about your, your brain hemorrhage? Um, I'm going to be dealing with some memory issues for up to six months, and uh, um, th the more that I try to return to uh, my regular activities, I notice that I'm having some difficulties with speaking um, in a in a normal way. Now I get it. If you okay, I gotta stop it there, and I have to interject. A couple of things to point out here. I'm gonna play this one more time, and I'm gonna ask you what this reminds you of hundreds of thousands of dollars for him. And he also got to go on Fox News again. First of all, uh, how are you doing tonight? And what is the Listen to him speak about right your, now. Your brain hemorrhage? Um, I'm going to be dealing with some memory issues for up to six months. And uh, um, th the more that I try to return to uh, my regular activities, I notice that I'm having some difficulties with speaking um, in a in a normal way. No. Okay. Anybody want to pipe up? What does that remind you of? What Gabby Giffords? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> also, notice he's got his left eye damaged. Well, yeah, he did get punched. He he did get punched. So maybe he's got a bruise. Okay. Maybe he got punched pretty hard. I don't know. I don't care. But well, you nailed it, Amy. Gabby Giffords. Thank you. The, the reason that the left eye damage stands out to me is because there's an awful lot of the... Uh, Symbolism. <laughs> elite who have had their left eye damaged. Oh, yeah, that's right. We had Joe Biden... Mm -hmm. uh-huh and um who who else um what was that other guy i'm trying to remember who all i know the pope was it john mccain am i am i making am i false memory no no i i remember that i just want to say uh hey to fellow man who just joined oh hey fellow man oh we got hey hey <laughs> fellow man Hey, first time on your show rufus welcome what's up, Gandalf? What's up amy welcome what's up, welcome fellow man Yes, I'm. I'm not the bad guy. People make me out to be. <laughs> no, fellow man is really. He's okay. He. Uh, we're not going to get into that. But you know what? We've had our difficulties. It's water under the bridge. Yeah. And, and and you and I can hash that out some other time. But I know that you're interested in the subjects we're talking about, and we've been oh, yeah. friendly. So, uh, we've been friendly lately, you and I. So I'm going to invite you on, and we're going to talk about this subject. And you and I can come back. We can we can debate religion some other time. We can debate yeah. whatever past history. We'll we'll leave that for now. So welcome, brother. Thank welcome. Yeah, man. Uh, I didn't look into Lancaster yet, man. I haven't had the time, but uh, I'm glad you did. I I'm willing to hear what you got to say, man. All right, um, all right. Yeah, right. Uh, and really I'll look forward to that actually. Yeah. Um, while we're on this uh, topic here, I just want to add in something that uh, I think everyone here would be really interested in. Like, we're talking about fake attacks, fake provocateur incidents. Um, there's actually a, a YouTuber. Her name is Blair White. She's a transgender uh, Trump supporter or former Trump supporter. Now, she came up with a video about almost a year ago now where she was talking about getting out of the entire political side of things because 
in her dealings with a lot of these people behind the scenes now she she never mentions names but what she gets into is that there's a lot of these people in the so-called mega movement that approached her with information and uh, suggestions of actually why don't you pay for example why don't you pay people uh, to come pretend that they are leftist agitators or protests at your uh, speeches, for example. Now... She suggested this? Yeah. Well, she was given information from other big names. She never says the names of these channels because I don't think uh, Blair White wants to really continue on with the drama. In this video, basically, uh, Blair just says... I'm done with the entire political side of things because I've found out that a lot of these people that everyone thinks are really trustworthy in the uh, kind of the, what what the alt right calls the alt light. So the the mega hats, the um, you know Trump is playing 4D chess, uh, trust the plan types. Um, Blair basically says that she was approached by various people um, saying that she should. Uh, pay for people to come and protest and to create a ruckus and to get it on video because these uh, confrontations, these uh, crazy events really is what gets the clicks for the uh, mega hat types. Um, and this is, this is all out there information. I, I think I'm going to try and find this uh, video from Blair uh, right now actually and share this. But yeah, it's hard to believe almost. I know you're probably uh, pretty skeptical about this Andy Nago thing, if it was a staged event or not, but I don't know. I, I just I just think we should all be wary of these things. I oh, we, yeah. We should be more than wary of everything that we see. At this point, we yeah. should be extremely skeptical. Uh, fellow man, do you have anything you want to add at this point before I move on? No, I just think uh, we should have a very critical mind when we look at these events, man, because they are capable of doing the most wicked stuff with video. I mean, they can really make things look like a f better than a movie, actually. Better well, than a movie. Yeah, at this point, with the deep fake stuff going on, it's way more, it's way deeper, it's way more nefarious, way more technologically advanced than just simple editing. And, yep. and simple editing has been successful so far. And now we're in a realm where we can go way beyond simple editing. Yes. Yeah. This is the problem with Andy No. This is why I want to cover Andy No, because this is literally just simple editing. This is not yeah. deep fake. Nobody's deep faking anything. This is not CGI stuff. This is just a matter of editing. And I'm going to finish. We're almost done. I want to finish this TMM video because it covers mm. this particular aspect that Andy No was at an event where Antifa was waiting for a Proud Boys uh, bus to show up, a counter-protester bus full of Proud Boys. And the new, Andy No and the news reported that Antifa was swinging hammers at the Proud Boys. Now, I'm not, just for the record, just for anybody who's listening, just in case the algorithm is listening to my voice and voice to text mm -hmm. and blah, 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 I'm not in support of either one of these group of fuckers. Okay, I'm, I just want to show the goddamn facts because Andy No has de depicted uh, the Antifa, and and again I am totally anti Antifa. Okay, but Andy No has depicted Antifa as being the 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 hammer wielding terrorists. And and they are terrorists. They're, they're known to broke to break windows. Andy, and, and, but it would have been nice. But but whatever. I'm gonna I'm gonna finish this video and then we'll we'll move on. We'll get past Andy. No, then we'll get on to Lancaster. Nice if Andy had felt the same sympathy for the lady who got her vertebrae fractured by some patriot prayer asshole, allegedly, instead of mocking and doxing her. Andy saw these guys standing around talking about fighting, so he has good reason to believe that this was premeditated. On the day of the El Paso shooting, he said nothing about that shooting, but posted a video of someone he believes to be a violent leftist kicking in a car windshield that he said happened 
happened Thursday morning. I suppose it could have been a Thursday morning, but it would have had to have been a Thursday almost three years prior because the article Oops. which contains the video says it was posted in 2016. When a guy who told everyone to read the proto-fascist book Might is Right by Ragnar Redbeard shot up the garlic festival, Andy seemed to think that the media were jumping to conclusions when they said this shooting was motivated by right-wing ideology, Oops. since the shooter never explicitly declared his motivations. But when it was discovered that the shooter in Dayton, Ohio referred to himself as a leftist, Andy claimed that shooter was motivated by left-wing ideology despite the fact that the shooter never made any such declaration either. He tweeted that the shooter was a member of the Antifa band Neckbeard Death Camp. But if you look at what Neckbeard Death Camp actually had to say about the guy, they make it clear that he wasn't much of a leftist due to the fact that he was clearly a raging misogynist. In Oops. August of 2019, the Proud Boys returned to Portland for another rally. Antifa showed up to counter-protest, and of course Andy was there with his camera. Andy shot video of this altercation with members of the far-right group is. American Guard and counter-protesters. Here it is. So they... Uh, I'm going to pause. So this is where the Proud Boys show up in a bus, and if you notice, the bus, the windows are already blocked off with the, the expanded metal where my mouse is on the on the right side of the screen. So they're already prepared for their windows to be busted out. And so Antifa is there ready to attack the people as soon as they open the doors, and here we go. Okay, now we have an Antifa member with a hammer in his hand. Everybody see the hammer? Right there. See the hammer? Everybody see the hammer? This is what was reported by Andy No, that Antifa had the hammer. Andy was there. He took this video, or some video... He says that the counter-protesters try to pull people out of the bus and hit them with a hammer. As you can see, what Andy fails to mention is that one of the American Guard guys tries to step out of the bus, slips on the stairs, and when a fight breaks... Now, watch this. Watch tries this. To step out of let, me, let me slow this down so I can pause it at just the right place. I don't need autoplay. Shut off. Okay, watch this. Bus. Right Slip there. Slips on the stairs. Right there. Who's got the hammer now? Can you see that? Out of the bus. Look. Slips Boom. On the stairs, hammer swing right there. And when a fight breaks the out, the, uh -huh. his buddy see that? Who and they take the hammer from him. This guy. He looks Asian to me, by the way, with the red hat on. Watch again. Fight breaks Look, out. From the his bus. Buddy. I'm going to play it, back it up again. Watch this. Guys Watch where the hammer comes from. He slips. Bus, Look, slips boom, on the hammer swing. Look who has the hammer. Fight breaks out. His they take it from him. who was standing behind him is the one who begins hitting people over the head with the hammer. The counter-protesters grabbed it from him and threw it back into the bus. And these are just some of the more egregious of Andy Ngo's falsehoods. I haven't covered anywhere near all of them. I tried to get this video up earlier than this, but it's hard to make a video that stays current when it's about a guy who tells a new lie every five minutes. And there we go. Hey, what's up, James? Good to see you around, brother. Right on. Good to see you, James. So there's that. Um, I've got some other notes on Andy No. If anybody else wants to pipe up before I get into a couple of my notes here. Uh, because I have an issue, and hopefully you, you guys can all still hear me yeah i i was i was muted i was saying okay. something and again i forgot i was muted um it, uh, it, it looked it looked rather um staged to me that bus event. so so sargon of akkad had something to say about all of this and i would like to show you my my problem is um, i wish i could hear it through the hangouts. Yeah, I'm sorry. Because um, <laughs> I'm having problems. I have to listen to you say things twice. 
So Sarkon of Cod had something to say about this, and he attacked David Pacman for reporting on this. David Pacman did a poor job reporting on this Andy No event. Um, and he got a couple of things wrong, but he got several things right. Uh, Sargon of Akkad pipes up, and Sargon of Akkad gets some things right and some things wrong. Uh, and I just want to try to suss out some of the shit that I have, you know, come to understand here. Um, Antifa uh, versus the Proud Boys. Uh, Andy's assault um, may be likely... Uh, oh, the... Andy knows the original video I played before where I showed Andy No getting attacked by Antifa. It's probably likely that someone from Antifa recognized Andy No. And that's why he was attacked. And when they were throwing milkshakes at him, um, David Pakman reports that Andy No said that they were throwing milkshakes made out of concrete. That's actually false. And this is a police report. This is a tweet from the Portland police. Police have received information that some of the milkshakes thrown today during the demonstration contain quick drying cement. We are encouraging anyone hit with a substance today to report it to the police. So that is a police tweet. So it wasn't Andy that reported it. Here is the actual police report. I'll explode this, blow it up a little bit so hopefully everybody can read. The first thing I want to notice is at the very, very top, it says, type, uh, narrative. Okay. Hmm. Okay. So we'll just, we'll just keep that in mind. Narrative, subject, info, author, Stanbrook, Richard Stanbrook, uh, related date and time. On July 29th, I was working in full uniform and assigned as the commander of 2nd Platoon for RRT. I was at the intersection of Southwest Morrison and 6th Avenue at this time. We had an incident where a subject threw a, the substance contained in a cup known as a, quote, milkshake at two males standing, two, that was, should be males, standing on the corner. I assigned Officer Kennedy and her partner to take a report from the two victims. As Officer Kennedy was taking the report, I had an unknown female walk up to me and say, quote, Those things are filled with quickcrete. Quote, I looked at the female, and she was covered about her head and shoulders with a gray colored substance that was starting to dry. I have worked with concrete periodically, and specifically quickcrete, which is premixed concrete, specifically, uh, which is quick creek concrete, specifically many times. Uh, the substance on the female smelt like quick creek. That's that's curious because quick creek really doesn't have an odor. Because um, I'm a contractor and I work with concrete all the time, it really doesn't have an odor. I also noticed that the substance was drying. Um, the substance was drying. It was turning into chalky consistency which from my experience is consistent with drying concrete. The female walked away from me before I could direct to an poor, poor, poor writing here. The female walked away from me before I could direct to an officer so a report could be taken. I also noticed some of the substance on the ground. The substance on the ground was also drying quickly and turning into chalky consistency. I firmly believe these, quote, milkshakes that were being thrown around and on to people contain some form of concrete. For situational awareness purposes, I broadcast over my radio that the milkshakes being thrown around contained quickcrete. While, while, here we go again with the poor writing, while we're in this area, I observed several people who had had this substance thrown on them. Okay, so there's a copy of the police report. So it wasn't Andy No that actually reported this. David Pakman got that wrong. Um, but here's here I got a screenshot. This is a, I got two screenshots. This is um, maybe I should play the other video first. Maybe you, you already saw that where the Proud Boys or no no it's the the prayer uh pray, the the Patriot. Uh, Prayer. Patriot Prayer. So here's a screenshot I'm going to show you from Patriot Prayer. 
here's the moment where Patriot Prayer was walking up and they were saying, oh, they're in the bar, there's a hundred of them, and the, and the big guy says, I'll take the first three. Um, screenshot number one that I have, and this is a pet peeve of mine. Can everybody see center screen? It. Wh what is that? That's Andy No. No, I'm not talking about the guy in blue. Yeah, that's oh. that's Andy No. What 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 is this right here? Center screen. What is that? What is that right there? That's the U.S. flag backwards. Thank you. Backwards. Now the same character has the U.S. flag on his helmet in the correct position. Mm-hmm. This is a pet peeve. This is a sidetrack issue that I have. Here's another screenshot. Same character on the front of his jacket. What is that? Let me wait till the delay comes up. I'm still watching. It's a backwards flag. Oh, yep. There it is. And look on his helmet. It's a correctly oriented flag. The same character, front and back, has the flag both forward and backwards. Now, Amy, you know, and I'm sorry to sidetrack, and I don't want to belabor the point, but this is a pet peeve of mine. The, the, the U.S. flag is a symbol, is a symbol of freedom and liberty. And if you give a shit about these things, then the symbol means something to you. And when you display, I understand symbolism, when you display it backwards or upside down or reverse, it means the opposite. <laughs> yeah, so, it means yep. the stress. Well, if it's upside down, referring to the flag specifically, if it's upside down, it means distress. Yes. But when it's left to right backwards, then it's a reverse symbolism. It means the opposite. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So when I see the reverse American flag, that kind of gets under my skin. It's just a pet peeve of mine. And, you know, maybe you're not aware, maybe you are. The excuse from the military is that... Usually you see this backwards flag, it's usually on the left shoulder, I, th I think it's the left shoulder, um, but anyway, of the, of the U.S. military, current U.S. military uniform, and when you ask these guys, they'll say, well, it, it's because we're going forward into battle, da-da-da, we're patriotic and this is all awesome because we're badass. Okay, you know what, fuck you. I tell you what, why don't you put that flag on the other shoulder and you can still be going into fucking forward in the battle and the flag will be oriented properly. How about that? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so here we got a guy who's got a flag on his fucking chest and his back and it's, his this backwards. Yep. And his helmet has flags that are forward facing. So is this guy going sideways to the left to battle? <laughs> Or is he going sideways to the right in battle? I don't understand. Are we going Are we going forward into battle or not? Is this guy going side sideways left or sideways right? This this is just I'm sorry. It, it, I know. I know. It's it's a bullshit pet peeve of mine. Something get sorry. All right. So, um I think I'm probably done with Andy no. I might Oh, Sargon claims that he met Oh, here. This is interesting. You'll like this. Sargon of a cod. He claims that he met Andy No in Portland. And I, I'm I'm gonna spare you the video. I'm gonna move forward as quick as possible through my notes so we can get on to Lancaster. Cause I know Josh is gonna be firing up here in about ten minutes. I don't wanna I'm, we're gonna go a little bit of overtime and I don't wanna step on his toes too much. Um Sargon of Cod claims that he met Andy No in Portland. Okay. I, I I don't know, during the protest, before, after the protest, when, hey, Sargon, just in case you get wind of my fucking video, when did you meet Andy No exactly? Because you just said clearly in your video that you met Andy No in Portland, and your excuse, here's the funny part, <clears throat> Andy took Sargon to a British-themed, excuse me, a British Empire-themed restaurant. In Portland. And so when when David Pakman and TMM and others 
have wondered about Andy No and his weird British accent because he's supposedly born and raised in Oregon. Why does he have a fucking British accent, which is very bizarre? Yes. Sargon of Akkad, his fucking excuse was, well, he's an Anglophile. Oh, he's an Anglophile, so he really likes England, and so he's adopted the English accent. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, yeah, really. I like England. I like to play around with an English accent. I love the English accent. I love England, the English accent. I love it to death. I'm a Monty Five Python fan since I'm a teenager. Do you hear the slightest hint of an English accent in my voice? No. I love the English accent. Am I English at all to you? No. Okay, so fuck off, Sargon. Your bullshit of excuse that Andy No is an Anglophile and that's why he has a fucking English accent is fucking bullshit. I'm not buying it. Sorry, I'm getting triggered. <laughs> I can tell. That pisses me off. That's bullshit. Yeah, that is bullshit. I can understand if you're an Anglophile occasionally affecting the accent, but I mean, not... Not in just general discussion of things. Right. Yeah, exactly. General discussion. I tinker. I've, I've used the English accent in jest and fun. So oh, surely you have, I'm sure. Right, exactly. Eh? Especially when I'm talking to our friend Dominic, right? Eh? You right? You right, Conchi? Yes. When, I, when we talk to Conchi, I use the English accent all the time. I do it in jest. But, I mean, Jesus Christ. I'm an Anglophile. I love the English accent. Do you hear me speak English? British accent? No. Not once have I ever heard you talking a British accent, mate. <laughs> and even when I want to, it's forced. You can tell it's a poor accent. The problem that I think people have uh, in North America doing British accents is they always do the typical, oh, of course, yes, of course, sir. <laughs> yes, just, just like I do. You shall have a front row seat of a carriage. <laughs> My lord. Indeed. <laughs> but, but I try to talk a little more like this, right? You sound like Claire there. <laughs> you, well, I think that the future of the, the, the Nazbol movement is up to us, friends. Really? I'm sure we can solve for all that. All right, I, I do want to play this real quick. This is a Sargon of Akkad's video. Uh, 10 minutes and 20 seconds. I want to play it for a couple of minutes. Listen to this fucking bullshit. Concerned with this hypocrisy. Hang on, let me correct the speed of this. Go back to normal speed. Check this out. This is This is some shit right here. Check this out. Left is consistently failing in this regard, and for some reason, you are completely unconcerned with this hypocrisy. But then things started to sort of not make sense about Andy No. So first of all, he had claimed that the milkshakes that were thrown at him, which I'm against, period, the milkshakes that were thrown at him contained concrete. This is where this is where David gets it wrong. Andy didn't claim this. I've already shown that which of course would conceivably harden and do serious damage to a human body. But there appears to be no actual evidence that there was any concrete there. So that started to be sort of a weird thing. This is factually incorrect. It was the Portland police who claimed that there was quick drying cement in these milkshakes. This was not Andy's claim, at least not originally. The evidence was testimony from a one officer Kennedy who recognized the substance, was familiar with it, and could see it on some of the victims of Antifa. You did no research in this regard, David. Then I asked myself, when I watched interviews with this guy, why does Andy know sort of speak in a British accent now, when if you look at videos from just a few years ago, he had a standard American accent and he was raised in Portland, Oregon. Uh, it's no crime to adopt a random accent. We know, what was it, Madonna has done it, right? Uh, uh, but the people that do that, uh, it, it's an odd thing to do, and often for me it signals that there may be sort of more to the person. It's rare that all they do that raises questions is adopt an accent that doesn't correspond to where they were raised. This is just casting aspersions on his character, David. I can tell you why Andy has, I suppose, cultivated a British accent. It's because he's an Anglophile. He likes Britain. 
when I met him in Portland, he actually took me to a British Empire themed restaurant. I couldn't believe such a thing even existed in the town, but apparently it did and it was very nice. There is absolutely nothing here. You are simply trying to create a bad impression of Andy in your viewers' minds. And again, I have to say, this seems to be remarkable hypocrisy, coming from the faction that wants people to be able to identify as anything that they want. Men identifying as women is no problem for you, but Andy trying to sound like he comes from a country that he prefers is weird, is it? Uh, but then Yeah, Sargon. It's weird. I just want to say, yeah, Sargon, it is weird. And it gets really bad journalistically. Oh, does it really? Well, I am all ears. Okay, Andy No starts reporting that at another Portland, Oregon protest, Antifa attacked right-wingers with hammers. He tweeted, Antifa attacks people on a bus. They try to pull them out and hit them with a hammer. That is an accurate description of the video that he posted. Okay, right there. Did you hear that? Sargon just said that's an accurate description of the video he posted. Did everybody hear that? Somebody pipe up. I'm going to play that again. Pull them out and hit them with a hammer. That is an accurate description of the video yeah, I that heard he that. posted. I'm going to play it one more time because you piped up just in, you interrupted. I want, to, I want everybody to hear this clearly. Listen to what Sargon says description of the video that he posted it's an accurate description of the video he posted so let me get this straight did andy no post someone else's video or was andy no actually present because if andy no was present and he filmed this himself surely he would have seen the hammer come out of the bus be taken from the member on the bus and thrown back into the bus. That is false reporting. Okay? Yeah, yeah. Sargon is defending Andy No. And by the way, have everybody have a look. This is Sargon of Akkad. Andy No did nothing wrong. I got news for you, Sargon. Sorry, pal. Andy No did everything wrong. Sorry. He's been fired from several, uh, at least mo more than one that I'm aware of, of, of his journalistic endeavors. Um, um, I, I, I forgot. It starts with a Q. I forget, I forget the name of the, the agency that he was working for as a, re as a journalist reporter. But um, yeah, uh, Sargon, no, Sargon. If Andy No posted this video... And I'll play it one more time just for brevity. If Andy No posted this video, and it was video that he took himself, since Andy No is a investigative reporter journalist with a fucking video camera, presumably Andy No would have seen the fucking hammer come out of the bus and would have known exactly what happened. So no, Sargon. This is the, what he showed... And yes, it was reported accurately based on what was shown. But what was shown is not where the hammer comes from. Okay? Antifa attacks people on a bus. But, but they Ruth, try to pull... Go ahead. He's a based Asian gay Trump supporter. <laughs> that means that, hey guys, you know, we all love Trump. We love sucking his dick. It means, look, look at the based Asian. It means, yeah. first of all, we're not racist because we have the based Asian. Right, right. It's a psychological it also, operation in hand. Uh, and look, but wait. That it, on also people's means, minds. it also means that these lies that the SJWs and the libtards spread about us are wrong because we also love gay people because we have a gay Asian Trump supporting friend. Exactly. Of that's that's the psyop at hand. Yeah, you, you no, you 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 Democrats, you <laughs> feel racist. <laughs> because why would you attack our person of color who's also gay? Right. And you guys are the real Nazis. Right. Yes. Racist. Right. 
<laughs> exactly. Oh god, it's the way these people speak online. If you I know, know it's bad. Oh fuck, it is so cringe. Like that Sargon fucker is the most annoying fucking condescending uh smug fucking prick. And people eat it up. Oh bro, if, you, if these people see like some uh some some crazy liberal woman going into an, a hissy fit. They will all descend like sharks to chum in the middle of the ocean, <laughs> and they will all feed upon. Look, look, look at how uh, silly this liberal is. Doesn't this make you feel like you're smarter because you're conservative? Yeah. Mm. It's it's fucking controlled. It's just, mind, oh god! It's, it's all about mind control, swaying <laughs> opinion, working yeah. on the naive mind. Yeah, it's the yes. black versus it's the black versus white team. It's the red versus blue team. It's the mm. you know join aside, uh, join or die. Yep. People need to step back and look at the picture, and they don't anymore. They just go along with this. Yep. Oh yeah, this is the thing of the day. Let's go along with it, you know. I don't I don't get it. Like I don't play ball like that. I, I could see past all that. A lot of us do here, you know, but well the younger generation, I, I Well we've we no talked, comment for. Well we've talked to a few uh smart younger people that have come across this side of YouTube. But the problem is is you know that's basically the exception. Like uh, I was 19 or 18 when I came into uh, YouTube, the side of YouTube, yeah. you know, like it's, it's a very small percent. But then again, with the population at large, I think that uh, every generation is full of morons. Really? Let's, let's move on. Okay. Yeah. So enough of the Najo guy. Um, let's <laughs> go on to Lancaster. Unless uh, fellow man or Amy has any final thoughts on Andy, no. I know it's bullshit. <laughs> yeah, basically. I think it's part of the play. I, that, I, seriously, I think that that eye injury was part of an initiation, right? Oh, interesting aspect. I haven't even thought about the initiation. Um, but yeah, mm -hmm. Amy, that's an uh, uh, interesting play. Interesting play. You know, Rufus, I think they're putting out this fake stuff now, like with Lancaster, to put it out there to get people confused because a lot of people are catching on to what's going on. So now, you know, you're going to have people like not believing the official story and believing the official story at the same time. You know what I mean? They're, they're trying to cause confusion. Um. Fellow man, have you heard me mention breadcrumbs for truthers? Uh, maybe. <laughs> I, uh, well, I've mentioned it many times, and I understand that not everybody has heard me, but many have heard me say it many times. Yes. Um, I've coined the term, uh, help me out, Amy, has it been three years? Oh, at least. Maybe two and a half, three years ago, I coined the term breadcrumbs for truthers, where I, I'm of the opinion that you know, they put these stories out with these tidbits of details for people like us to chew on. Yes. They show us what they want us to see. And they know full well that conspiracy-minded people exist. And now with the internet that the conspiracy crowd has gained a little bit of a following. And so there's lots of people looking into all these aspects and details. Yeah. And so they put these details out there for people like us to chew on. And they're dead end rabbit holes, is what they really are. Yes. Yes. Yep. So it's all done on purpose to keep us busy, chasing our tails. Yes, distract us. I feel the same way about chemtrails now. I don't want to bring that up, Rufus, but like I bought into it at first. You know, I did. I was thinking, oh, they're spraying us every day with this stuff. Look, look what's going on in the sky. And then I did a little research. And then I learned a difference between cloud seeding and condensation trails. I have a question for you on that. Um, why do they come out in grid patterns? 
because that's the way the flight paths go across. No, no, uh, well, no, that's the way they. Yep. Wi that's the way the wind currents turn it into a an entire cloud. Well, I'm just talking about the path. Well, you know, I, I'm kind of fifty-fifty on the whole thing uh, myself, fellow man. You know, I yeah, sure, sure. I, I'm just telling you where I'm at with it. Yeah, like I'm kind of the same way, man. Like I know when I see these uh, lines coming behind jets in the sky, I don't think, oh my god, it's a it's a CIA unmarked plane trying <laughs> to gas me or something like that. What I see is um, a plane very high up in the atmosphere that is triggering condensation in its wake from its jets as it moves through the sky well yeah it's it's about elevation humidity and pressure well well i've got a question one summer day in las vegas was the first time i noticed the trail and my first trail and you know i mean i'd been a sky watcher all my life me too and so you know i had like 40 years worth of looking and the first time I see a trail, I'm in Las Vegas. It's a warm day, and I can see the plane. It's that low. And across the sky comes this streak. And I'm looking at that going, that ain't normal. Now, I do know that there have been people who've done testing of soil like, how valid is that? We got to wonder too, you know. Well, yeah, but they they generally don't get much traction. I'm just saying, and mm -hmm. they've done they've, they've done tests. They say from soil underneath a house and outside a house. Yeah. And the soil under the house. And when we say they, Amy, are we sure we're trusting the source from? Like I said, they? I don't. I don't know. That's the thing, you know. That's I can't that's say for with. sure. But like I said, there, it's not like the media is picking it up and throwing it around. Mm -hmm. No, I think fellow man is right. We got to keep an eye on the source. Yes. Well, yeah, as I recall, it looked legitimate, but this was, I don't know, five, six, seven years ago. I can't. You know, yeah, yeah. I, I, I question everything, <laughs> you know that, and, and I get called crazy about my opinions on New Zealand, but I, I look at it with a critical and rational mind and what they're capable of and what they're not really capable of. And then I try to come to a consensus. I don't auto hopes like people accuse me of. Um, I, I try to look at the data and, and draw a conclusion you know, and try to come up with a good hypothesis before I come to that conclusion. Well, I, I have garnered enough data to give high probability that if it's in the news, it's fake. Amy, but, you're, Amy, you're a little hot. Oh, okay. Well, I'm not sure how to handle that. This doesn't have a volume control or anything. Can, can you swing your mic a little bit further away from the mouth? I'm, I'm trying. Is that better? A little more, please. Hmm. How's yep. that? Nope. Okay, it's it's as far as it'll go right now. That's a little what? bit better. Okay. Amy, I'm at the point where not of course everything is can't be faked. Like local stories, you know, stories in your own hometown. Oh, here we that, go. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, like some stories are, are very real, you know. I mean we gotta accept that. But these mainstream stories, yeah, they all need to be questioned and sourced and, and see uh, if they're well, valid or not. I, I, will, I will presume that they are, they are fake and then go looking for stuff that proves that they aren't. So, and, so, and so, 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 fe so fellow man, fellow man, yeah. the reason Amy laughed a second ago, because she, I don't know if you're aware but Amy is very aware of the story that happened in my own neighborhood, and I have video to prove it. Yep. Are you, are, I don't know how close you've been following what I've been up to, but no. I, I've told this story more than once. In my neighborhood, literally mm, three or four houses away from me, where I live in my neighborhood, just on the very, very outskirts of my little tiny subdivision, is, yep. a, is a tree service. Mm -hmm. 
and I do a lot of business with these guys. I get wood for burning in the winter. They cut my tree because I got a sizable property, and I use them all the time to cut down trees. And um, I get mulch for my property, for my garden, and for my front yard. Mm-hmm. Um, so I know these guys. I'm always in and out, and they know me by name. I know them all by name. Mm-hmm. One day I'm outside working, and I'm, I'm just going to tell the story again. This is a local story because you brought it up. And when I mentioned it, Amy laughed because she knows what I'm going at. Mm-hmm. This happened literally in my neighborhood. The police blocked off the whole surrounding streets all the way around my neighborhood. Helicopters, police, fire, everybody was there. Yeah, yeah. ATF, bomb squad, they were all there. I get a phone call from my neighbor. She says, look over toward, I won't name their name. But she says, look over toward the tree service. And there's smoke. And I had a friend who was visiting me at that moment. And so we jumped in the car and we ran down the road to see what was going on. And I filmed and I talked to the cops. And I talked to the people at the tree service because I know them and I interviewed them literally as it was happening. Here's the story. There's a trailer. There's a sizable lot because they have equipment and they have a giant mulch pile and they have trees and you know leftover uh, limbs that they turn into wood that they sell for firewood so they have a big lot and they have a, a trailer on the property and when no one is there they they rent the trailer to a guy who lives in the trailer it's his it's his it's his house they give it to him for free And all he has to do is keep an eye on the property, okay? And unfortunately, when you enter into a situation like that, you're going to get a grifter, Mm -hmm. okay? So somebody who can't afford to live anywhere, right? Some low life. All right, bottom line is this. I'll cut to the chase. The guy lost his fucking mind. He booby-trapped the place. He pulls a gun on the owner and the owner's son, sticks it in their face, and he's losing his fucking shit over some silliness, whatever, what differences they had. And at one point, they get away, and he doesn't, you know, there's no shots fired, but they call the cops. Mm -hmm. And they're saying, okay, the guy on our property, he just pulled a gun on us, he said there's booby traps, blah, 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 and boom, the cops show up. Surrounded it. The whole neighborhood surrounded. Helicopters. They should pull bomb dogs and bomb squad. They got the fucking robot. The the bomb robot. Mm-hmm. I got pictures of the bomb robot roaming around. ATF is there. The guy, he waits for the police to approach the trailer, and he ignites the propane tank and explodes. He tries to take out the cops, kills himself. Tries to take out a few cops in the process. Um, here's the bottom line. It doesn't even make local news. Wow. Okay? Yeah. Yeah, you'd think that... Didn't you... At the time that it happened, or shortly thereafter, you were going... I was certain that this would be on the national news and put my little town on the map. Exactly. I thought this was... I thought my little town... My suburb of Atlanta was going to be national news. My little subtown of Atlanta was going to be, you know, household name. Because this, I thought, wow, this fits the narrative. But mm-hmm. apparently it didn't fit the narrative. Because it was real. They couldn't control the narrative 100%. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know exactly why. But there was, there might have been a ticker or a headline, or a tiny article. I couldn't find it. I looked. I couldn't find it. It didn't make national news, and I looked, and I I couldn't find it. If there was anything, I couldn't find it. It didn't even make local news, as far as I'm concerned. I couldn't find anything. It was bizarre. And I got video footage of the event, not, not the actual event, but I got video footage of the smoke, the after effect, I interviewed the fucking people at the tree service. I interviewed cops. I was there. I got video. 
and it didn't even it didn't even make a blip on the fucking map. So yeah, it's a strange situation there, brother. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't know what else to say about that. Yeah. It, so, well, I'm just, I'm just saying that like some local news is mostly uh, correct. Not all the time, but because it's local. Yeah, well, I shared a couple videos the other day, um, which I thought had potential to be uh, national news stories. Mm -hmm. There was the one story that I, um, this was like, I think it was like a local news station coming out of Ohio. And it was of a man who, now I, I subscribe to a bunch of small U.S. news stations. Don't ask me why, but. Well, I'll, I'll tell you why, fuck it. Um, I have found some of the most whacked out, bizarre things you can imagine coming out of small little cable access or um, small like ABC affiliated news stations coming out of like Hoboken, uh, New Jersey or uh, Claremont uh, West or uh, Montana, y you name it, some little f fucking place. I'll find the craziest shit you can imagine. So this one story, this guy who was a mental patient escaped the asylum down the road and came and raped uh, a woman's pit bull. She came into uh, her backyard and saw this mental patient raping her pit bull. And she took out a nine millimeter and shot it into the air. And the guy continued to rape the pit bull. And this is, was one of the most fucked up stories you can imagine. And it went nowhere. It went nowhere out of uh, southern Ohio. The second story was of uh, this couple in some trailer park in uh, North Carolina who had manufactured hundreds of pipe bombs. And they had planted the pipe bombs all over their small town of Dudley, North Carolina, and it was insane. But for some reason or another, these two completely fucked up stories that you think would have garnered in years, maybe more than 500 views, uh, went nowhere. But these huge stories that seem less significant in many ways blow up nationwide in Canada and the States. I just think it's kind of strange that people planting pipe bombs, bom <laughs> like a bombing of modern day bombers in the United States does not garner national attention. Yeah. With the hysteria going on around terrorism related anything, why did this story not go nationwide? Why did the story of a man raping a pit bull go nowhere? It's because these weren't the greenlit stories to go national. Is what I they, is they, honestly what I think nowadays. They weren't coded. Yeah, they, they were probably it was probably a real couple of rednecks uh, making pipe bombs, and it was probably a real madman uh, having sex with a pit bull. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they they weren't hey, coded. Hey, speaking of a guy raping a pit bull. Are, are, is this the same story where the pit bull bit the guy's balls off? No, that must be a different story. Because there yeah. was there there was a story. There's a there's a YouTube channel, a guy out of Australia called Gerald Gerald Poshman. Great channel. I love this guy. He's hilarious. He's funny. He's smart. He puts out really great content. Um, shout out to Gerald Poshman, uh, P A U. S C H. I hope I spelled it correctly. You, you'll you'll find him if you look for him. Gerald Poshman out of Australia. He's an older guy, silver hair, white hair, silvery, whatever, salt and pepper. Um, uh, brilliant, funny, funny, just smart. Um, and he covered this story where this guy was he put peanut butter on his balls, and, and this oh. is this is a total sidetrack. I'm sorry, this is not what we intended. <laughs> <laughs> um, this guy put peanut butter on his balls oh. and, and he had his friend I think it was his friend's he was watching his friend's dog or his brother's dog and it wasn't even his dog um, 
he put peanut butter on his nuts, and he wanted his, his fucking dog to lick his nuts, and the dog chewed his fucking nuts off. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh serve God. him right. <laughs> oh, so oh the, my God. Here's here. <laughs> and okay, so I was just wondering if that was the same story. So I left a comment, and the comment I left was, "So much for safe word, sit, stay." Down. Okay, maybe not that one. <laughs> you know, there, a lot of sick shit goes on, and you never hear anything about it. It never goes national. You know, these weird, weird stories. It it boggles the mind why some stories that seem relatively insignificant get national attention. Exactly, brother. And yeah, it's just weird. Like, it's like I don't think it's weird at all. Well, there's the the story uh, that came out of Detroit about two years ago of a mentally retarded woman that was kept in a shed in a trailer park and people from all over this small suburb of Detroit would come and have sex with mentally retarded woman mm. and they would feed her through a, a, a like a, a dog hole uh, macaroni and cheese and this woman lived there for years and nobody in the trailer park had any idea what was going on or who these people constantly coming to the next door neighbor's trailer were. Like, you'd think that that would be a national story of, like, uh, mentally handicapped abuse. Uh, you know, they'd be able to find some kind of way of twisting that. Same well, thing with the pipe bomb and the pit bull rape story. Or the, the pipe bomb and the pit bull rape story. Yeah, but the thing is that what they are showing on the on the big news is stuff that they manufacture. And everything there is coded. Uh, I don't know if you know the channel uh, Gematronator. Oh, uh, God. Oh, uh, gosh. Well, Sorry. no, he's, he does a very good job. And I'm telling you the... the the likelihood that these are all just coincidences is rather astronomical. And it's over well, I, and over, over and it's over just, and over. It just sometimes they use the use the words they want to get the number they want. Well, it's, not Dematronator, because he does more than just the words. Yeah. He takes the dates between the local official yeah and and they always have a connection to a phenomenal degree they always have some connection and it's usually oh i definitely believe there's highly there's codes out there i just don't think the powers that be are going to give us a system to debunk them well i don't they you know they tried to take down I and mean, they did take down his first channel yeah they don't I think, want they, I think it's like maybe they'll give us the numbers that that we think that are correct but you have to like subtract 10 or add 5 to get the real number yeah then you got to add 4 <laughs> and divide it to the last number yeah yeah so, so I, i'm going to that. say i'm pretty sure that there's more to it than we have discovered yeah but i am going to say that i do believe that there is something to it oh, and that they like are it. coding yeah. these yeah, deliberately. It's like, it's like that guy, um, a former uh, guest of the show. Uh, Zach Hubbard. Yeah, Zachary K. Hubbard. <laughs> the biggest who, scammer ever. He's <laughs> now uh, authored a, a thrilling uh, a book on Yes. His, um, <laughs> well, uh, now, see, I think, Zach, <laughs> I think Zach is either compromised or just a dick. Or just on the to make money. I don't, think he's money. <laughs> I don't think he's compromised. I don't think he's a government agent. I just think he sees a lot of gullible idiots yes. that exist, and why not well, profit off of them? Yeah, well, see, the thing is, that's why I didn't bring him up, because I think he's scum. Well, when you bring up Jamatria, that's the first thing people think. Well, I hope not. I think they I'm should. Sorry, they of, I think they should be thinking of Dramatronator Derek Corey, because <laughs> because he has never asked for a single penny. Well, that's for good. anything. 
and he does live sh decodes and he shows the well, numerology and well, the gematria the well, whole nine you know, yards. Amy, I do think that there are thing like there is a bit to this uh numerology thing yes, so there is. you know there's you know there the, the number 33 or 19, 30. 1989 you see these repeating numbers over and over and over again i think there is something to it but you know i think that a lot of times people read way too much into this so spend some time with watching derek on the matronator underscore eight five underscore okay well I'll, I'll check him out like i think i had subscribed to him like a long time ago but then i was subscri back then i was subscribing to anyone uh well, you, probably, <laughs> you probably subscribed to his original channel which is no longer there you know i was i uh, randomly i'm uh i'm subscribed to like a thousand or two thousand people on uh my multiple channels and so when i go to the subscription feed i'll get like 20 different live streams of different people that are all live at the moment and one thing i'm always fascinated by is the amount of people that are watching uh zachary k hubbard uh he'll have re uh in the 500 to 400 to 700 range of people watching him actually yeah I, yeah i think it's amazing that people still pay attention to him well, I, I truly believe that 300 to 400 are bots yeah well I, 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 I wouldn't be surprised in that once um, you get a thousand subs you could buy packages on here and get all the bots you want you yeah for the right price uh yeah and maybe maybe he used that money that he stole from people when he tried <laughs> he said he was going to set up a true site sabotaged it oh he was running the president, president right, right? He was oh my president god. Right? <laughs> oh my god i totally forgot about that i he wanted a hundred thousand dollars to run for president remember that <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't think he did much with that, but the truth site, we know, oh we, know, my God. we know he collected $16,000 through uh, GoFundMe. And <laughs> he, anyone he, remember the, uh, we're, the... We're estimating he got another 5000 on his uh, PayPal. Okay, do you guys and, remember um the uh when he put up the video of, like, a, it looks like he backed, uh, like, a, a truck? into the side of his house and oh yeah three thousand dollars yes well no that 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 was kj that wanted thirty three thousand yeah, i don't i don't know what the truth on that particular yeah, thing is but it is fishy the point is the point is that for the site he came out with a vid that said specifically that the first thirty three thousand dollars yeah he did that, yes, he did. that, that, right. that we're going was going to be for that site only and then it turns out after he came in and started ranting about how uh, Flat Earth had taken over the site, which it hadn't, there were people on both sides and it, everything was friendly and reasonably respectful on both sides. And it wasn't the whole of what was going on there. Uh, he came in and ranted about that and then turned and claimed that these guys who had donated their time and skills yeah. to get the site up running claimed that they had just ripped him off. <laughs> well, they, they came back and delivered a, a, an accounting of every penny of the just under $2,400. Just under $2, Okay. All, now, all for truth was the name of the website, right? Yes, all for, all yeah. for truth. Oh anyway. God, I remember this now. <laughs> and God. so they showed their accounting where every penny, and he, so he paid out two thousand four hundred dollars. <laughs> he collected probably about <laughs> twenty twenty one thousand dollars, and then he, he he almost immediately after he ranted and raved and accused and all of that started talking about spending the rest of the money on other things oh my and a god number and a number of people who 
were amongst the ones who donated <laughs> came to me because, you know, up until that point, I had been fairly close with Zach, as close as one can get online, you know. They came to me and said, can you ask him for an account, his accounting? And so I posted a, a request on All for Truth and then wound up having a Skype <laughs> conversation, which I documented, and it's on both my channels. It's called My <laughs> Skype Conversation with Zachary K. Hubbard. And, you know, I show where I ask him respectfully. You know, I've said a number of people have asked me, you know, can you give the accounting? And what he came back with was insulting me. And I proceed, you know, and how does a homeless woman <laughs> get on the web anyway? You know, it's like, no, why don't we discuss <laughs> the topic, not me? <laughs> you know, Oop, I think I hit a bu button. Uh, kudos okay, I got it. So at any rate, um, he, he <laughs> was just, at the end of the conversation that we had, the text conversation, he proceeded to disengage the <laughs> Skype. He, he bumped me off the connection. We He broke the connection. And then for about three months, I'd go in and I'd be making a comment on somebody's vid, not his. After that, I quit enriching him with my attention. He would come in and on, my comment would be on something totally different having nothing to do with him and he'd he'd start in you hag this woman is yada 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 i mean just attacking me um i'm like just three letting, months i'm just letting uh roof know um that we are entering t minus 10 minutes on josh's end before he starts up mm. oh okay so he'll be starting up here pretty soon yeah um amy uh fellow man i'm not sure where rufus is but i'm here i just want Okay, oh, I just want to ask you guys, does anyone remember a character by the name of uh, Deed Sanchilli? Mm. Um, who, so Deed Sanchilli was at this thing called the Oregon Standoff. And Deed Sanchilli uh, was eventually arrested and sent to a federal jail. Now... Um, he is live streaming Antifa versus Crowd Boys uh, street fights, getting, mm. five, oh. getting five or six hundred views, uh, like just like just like Mister ZKH, um, he's getting like five six hundred megapedes and uh, uh, cl uh, Trump hats watching him. Wow. And whereas two years ago, or three years ago now, wow, time flies, he's saying uh, we need to overthrow the government. Yep, I remember that. We all remember this, the Oregon standoff. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yes, I yes, up, yes. I put up a video. I, I put up a video of him live streaming the uh, Proud Boys versus Antifa street fight the other day. And he says, I quote, that Trump needs to send the army with tanks to lay a siege or and take over uh, Google and Twitter. So, oh, grief. So, so from being some cowboy, uh, fucking horse riding patriot with the uh, Gadsden flag three years ago, yeah, some kind of quasi authoritarian begging the government to send tanks to fuck internet websites headquarters uh, this, he's, a, he's a work ain't he? listen literally this is the truth movement it's full of complete moron fools that well was... i think i think that a lot of them are paid to be yeah i do believe that amy but there's got to be a lot of idiots that go along with this. That too. There's that there's too. certainly a fair number, but I think that the they're they're more they're less worried about accumulating morons 
than they are giving the appearance that there's a huge number. You know, it's more illusion. It's like the illusion that, that this is uh, a free country and that the original constitution still has any sway. It's, it's, it's gone. We don't have the original constitution in effect. And in fact, the Bill of Rights, which was attached to the original one, it's not attached to what's in force now. I would have to disagree with you, Amy. Uh, I, I think they're trying to attack those rights. I just don't think we lost them yet. Well, I think they maintain an illusion, and so they can't make it look like we've really lost them. Okay? But it's not in effect. The, the incorporating documents in 1871 that look very similar, but instead of saying mm -hmm. uh, the, the, uh, for the uni United Uncapped States cap of America, it, it now says of the uh, uh, United States all cap. Well, as of now, I still have the right to petition the right, the freedom of whatever religion I choose. Um, well, yeah. Freedom of speech uh, on the streets, you know, freedom of the press, maybe not on the internet because the internet's owned by corporations that control um, uh, the, many other freedoms I, I can't think of right now. But Well, the thing is, they're not, they're not going to enforce anything that, that will obviously make it clear that those rights are gone. Still, they want yeah. us to think that we still have them. And it may look like we still have them. But I'm going to tell you that technically, technically, we do not. Technically. All right. Well, can, like I said, it's we all have our opinions. It's good. All right. Can we can we finish our last topic? Yeah, we got to finish oh, it. Oh yes. We Sorry. only have, we have T minus twenty seven minutes. Oh no! Sorry. Oh my God! We only have twenty three minutes. Twenty three minutes. Um, I thought we were already thirty seven minutes over. Yeah, I think we've gone into over over now. We are over. Okay, look, I I just want to cover this, and we can close out. Um, let me figure out which screen is which. Um, I had a uh, tab, LA County Times. I wanted to cover Lancaster. I, I wanted to spend more time on this. Yeah, uh, I definitely want to spend more time. Um, we can come back. We, we can do a supplemental stream or another. We can cover this on another show. But for those who might slightly be paying attention, um, let's just start from the beginning. Fellow man, I know you haven't been following this particular story too closely, but I thought, I thought you would be particularly interested in this story oh i am i'm i'm here to listen to what you found so we have it starts off with this police officer who and, and this sucks because i have to go all the way back i don't have notes and i don't know where to go this is just i'm just doing this on the fly right now um so the story starts off with this young police officer fresh out of the academy he's 21 years old 21 year old officer he calls on the radio and we have the 911 or we have the initial you know uh, police broadband or the police band whatever frequency okay it's not on the main 911 whatever we have the initial call where he says he's been shot he is this is LA County this is uh, Lancaster LA County for those who don't know uh, this is near the helipad, uh, just outside of the barracks, or the otherwise known as the cop shop. Okay, so it's the, the it's the county lockup, the police headquarters, where they take you when you get pulled over and you get arrested. You know the initial cop shop. Um, he gets shot by a sniper. This was re widely reported, nationwide. I'm in Atlanta. This happened in L.A. I heard about it. 
So this is mainstream national news. Um, nearby, across the street, is a, a, a building that's, I don't know, 10 or 15 stories. I don't know exactly how tall it is, but it's not a, it's, it, it's, it's a mid-size building. It's, it's a building that supposedly houses uh, mental patients of various varying degrees. So it's a facility that helps people with mental issues of all kinds. Um, this police officer on the police property in the parking lot near the helipad, he reports on his radio, I've, I've been shot. And, of course you know, circle the wagons, all the cops show up, we got a shooting, officer down, right, massive response. The whole area is closed off, neighborhood after block after block, they create a perimeter, Everyone think, everyone's in lockdown, right, the whole fucking shebang. Uh, news reports have said hundreds, plural, hundreds of officers responded. Okay, this was a big deal. So if you haven't heard, this was a big deal. Um, the officer, and I'll come to his name in a moment as I go through this article, but I'm going. Everything I'm doing right now is on memory. Um, the officer was. I'm I'm going logistically because that's how I my brain works. Okay, I'm all about logistics. Okay, so let's. This is what you won't get in the news is the logistics step by step. Okay, step by step is what you won't fucking get. So, okay, the officer radios in. I've been shot. What's the first thing that's going to happen is cops are going to run out of the building because they're in the parking lot. They're at the cop shop, right? So they don't even have to show up in their cars. All they got to do is open the door, back door. Oh, my God, you're in the parking lot? Here I come, bro. Boom, cops are running out the back door. Logistically, the first thing that's going to happen is cops are going to be on the scene on foot from the barracks, the building, because he's in the parking lot. So, the next thing that's going to happen is that the cops on scene, the first cops, because they have some, most cops, if not all, have some paramedic training, first aid, first response type training. And the first thing is, is that you identify the wound, you apply pressure if it's bleeding out, right? Everybody understands, I think, Anybody who has been through the 5th or 6th grade and has that kind of level of intelligence and understanding can grasp the concept that first responders understand that when there's a serious wound, the first responder's job is to identify the wound, apply pressure. If it's bleeding, you apply pressure. Boom. So we're talking about a gunshot. The officer re reports, I've been shot. So, okay, cops are on the scene. The guy's, what, is he on the ground? Is he bleeding? Do you know what I mean? Imagine the scenario. You're the cop running out of the building. And you're running out of the parking lot. Where's my buddy? New recruit. Down. Where is he? Oh, there he is. You you get to the scene. There he is. And the first thing you're going to do is what, exactly? You're going to call an ambulance. You're going to call life flight. He's been shot. Officer down. You're going to, what, rip open his shirt and try to identify the are you bleeding bad? Where you've been hit? How bad is it? Do I need to apply pressure? All that kind of stuff. So I'm thinking in my mind all the logistics. So the news broadcast goes out. Officer sniper. A sniper shoots officer. Officer down. New recruit or whatever the hell they reported. And I forget the exact headlines. Pardon me. But it goes out nationwide. It's a big deal. Cop has been shot. Sniper. Those are fucking headlighting, biting words, right? So, um, okay, so you call, you call an ambulance, and the ambulance shows up. Now, first of all, if you're the first officer on the scene and you're helping a fellow officer, you, you know the thin blue line, right? You're helping your fellow officer. You're going to... You're going to see, if you're not in on the joke, you're going to see right away, there ain't no fucking wound. Are we calling an ambulance? Do I call an ambulance? What do I see? Does he need an ambulance? Do we need that kind of assistance? Who do I call? What do I do? 
So um, what I'm doing right now is I'm painting a picture. I'm establishing that the first officers on the scene are in on the joke. I'm trying to establish the first people to arrive are in on the joke. So now we call an ambulance and the ambulance shows up. Now we got people from the hospital, ambulance drivers, they show up. Their job is to triage, assess the damage, apply pressure. Are you bleeding out? Apply pressure, all that shit. And what do they do? They put the guy in the ambulance. They take him to the fucking hospital. I've been in ambulances, and trust me, they don't just fucking throw you in the back. They sit down with you for a second, and they do triage. They assess the situation. They figure out, what the fuck is going on? What do I need to do to save this man's life? That's their job. So the ambulance shows up, and they throw this guy in the back, and they wheel him off to the fucking hospital. Well, apparently, the, the EMTs who put him in the back obviously have figured out that this guy needs to go to the fucking hospital. Well, how'd they do that? We'll get to it. We'll get to it. So now he's at the hospital. We have a report. And trust me, all this is on memory, and I can back up every fucking thing I'm saying. I have not, I don't have notes, I don't have timestamps right now, but if you, if you want to challenge me, and I'm not reading the chat, I'm, I'm pure memory right now. The mayor, pay attention, the mayor is on record, on camera, saying, I was at the hospital 20 minutes after he arrived. He was in a lot of pain. He was treated for a gunshot wound. The mayor is on camera saying this. The hospital has released a report. They're saying that they received this officer for gunshot wound, they treated the patient, and he was released. Well, what'd you treat him for? We'll get to that. We'll get to that. Because here's the bottom line. It has come out, and I'm about to show you this article, what I'm showing you right now, Deputy Right here, the headline, deputy who allegedly faked being shot by a sniper is fired from L.A. County Sheriff's Department. So they're throwing this kid under the bus. Did he get fired? I don't know. Did he get promoted? I don't know. Did who he, knows? Did he move to another state to get a higher paying job? I don't know. This is the headline. Deputy who allegedly faked being shot. So now what they're saying is that the whole thing was a hoax. They've admitted this. They've admitted it was a hoax. This is Jussie Smollett on the level of the L.A. County Police Department. Is everybody hearing my words? Jussie Smollett on the level of the L.A. County Police Department. Hmm. They're throwing this kid under the bus. It's his fault. He pulled it off. They're saying that he took a knife, poked holes in his shirt to replicate, you know, bullets entering and puncturing or whatever. And the hospital is actually reporting that they treated him for a contusion. In other words, a bruise. Oh, jeez. <laughs> so... Fellow man, I want you to pipe up because you and I have a, a recent history with my new friend. And trust me, I trust, I, I like this guy. I really do. Domingo. And you have said to me that Domingo thinks everything is real. There is no such thing as a false flag. They don't fake shootings. They don't fake these events. Is that true? Is that what you said to me about Domingo? That's the impression he's given to me. He is labeled <clears throat> crazy for questioning New Zealand. <clears throat> what he'll do, he, he, he tries to be clever. He'll manipulate it to try to make me look, look crazy, but it doesn't work on me. I, I, I know better. 
what he'll do is sit there. He'll sit there and go, well, fellow man, he thinks blood squibs were used on New Zealand. So you know, have you... thinks there's no planes that hit the World Trade Center. Fellow man is crazy. I would like to see guns removed from fellow man. This is what comes out of Domingo's mouth. This man has actually told me to kill myself. What? Oh, there's a charmer. What? This ain't an exaggeration. We have the screenshots. OJM and I would do streams on 9-11, and he would just jump in the, in the right. chats going, no, no planers, no brainers. And if you listen to Domingo, you'll hear him pull the same Ryan Dawson um, lines on people. And Rufus, you were like a step above him when you were having a conversation with him about New Zealand. You were sitting there saying, well, the same FBI that lies to us, the same FBI that already knew about 9-11 beforehand. Uh -huh. And he was trying to push on you that they didn't know about Dominic Souter and the Urban Moving Systems Company. He was trying to say that because of Ryan Dawson, that the FBI was able to investigate Dominic Souter. You understand, like, he doesn't get that the powers that be all communicate with each other and already knew about 9-11 beforehand. And well, knew that's exactly, exactly what I'm trying to expose here. Is, well, I'm just saying, like he did. Well, it. I don't want to. He, did, he tried to manipulate you, and it, I, I okay. think he's probably sitting at home in his mom's basement reading books on how to. Well, okay, let's not do it. All enough. right, all right, all right. I understand the history, and keep that to yourself, please. Yeah. Um, he's not here to defend himself, so I don't want to do ad homs. Yeah, I'm sorry, but he does it to me when I'm not around. So. Uh, okay, well, let's be above that, and let's yeah, not. I understand. So. I just want to make the point that, and and I'll I'll speak to Domingo, but people who think that these events are not staged, and that people who who want to be like apologists for these events, who uh, I just got a uh, something from Domingo, so he's listening. Yeah, of course, he thinks. Hey, Domingo, do you want to come in here? They are not staging. I, I don't. I don't want to talk to that. All right. Shit. You, all right. All right. All right. All right. Dead to me. All right. I don't. I don't want. All right. I, I'm not. I'm not here for that. We're not doing that. I'm not. All right. I, I'll talk to Domingo. I'll talk to him live, private, whatever. I don't care. And I'm not talking shit. No. But no. I, I just want to make the point. I'm just trying to make this point. And the point is that people who are apologists for events like this, exactly, are. I don't know. I, I, and well, I know. I'm just saying there's so, people wait, 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 out wait. there. I, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to choose my words extremely carefully. I know. I'm just saying there's people out there that think they're not staging these events to push new laws on us. All right. So let's so let's, let's just like recap. Mind. Let's Let me recap. Now, look, I'll acknowledge. No, 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 no. Let Hang me on. rephrase that. There's people out there that don't believe it's possible, that don't, that don't think that – they would do this. Right. Okay. So I, I acknowledge that I'm so far on Lancaster subject. I have not, I've not established the narrative as far as showing. And I'm, I, I'm stuck on this headline on this article. We haven't moved past that. And everything that I've said is based on my memory, but trust me, you don't believe me. Go and look it up and prove me wrong. Everything I'm saying is pretty damn accurate. The bottom line is yeah, you're doing a good job. That the that the officer, um, this young out of the ad academy officer, this is the this is the narrative. I don't know. Well, he could have been forty years old. I don't fucking know. All I'm telling you is this is the narrative. We have an article, we have a news story, officer down. He's a sniper. Sniper shot him. Where? In the parking lot. What what parking lot? The cop shop, LA County. Gotcha. Okay. Now what? He gets on the radio. The cops are the first on the scene. 
and then the ambulances are first on the scene. They take him to the fucking hospital. They the articles that keep coming out. They say he was treated by uh, hospital officials. Say he was treated and released. Headlines: treated and released. Well, what the fuck does that mean? What the, what treatment? Yeah, treated how? And then you keep digging. If you're interested in the story, you keep looking and you find out. Oh, they say it was a it was a contusion, um, and he faked it. So wait a minute, contusion? If you're gonna poke holes in your shirt with a knife to make f- believe that you were shot, hey, see, look at my shirt. I was shot. Uh, well, let's look at your skin. Uh, what happened to your fucking skin? Is there a hole? Are you bleeding? Um, no, you're not fucking bleeding. You got a bruise. Do you? Do you have a bruise or not? Yeah. I don't fucking know. I'm reading these articles and I'm going, wait a minute. None of this fucking shit. This shit, the, the narrative is falling apart the more you look at it. And then they throw this kid under the bus. They say, oh, he faked it. He took a knife and he poked holes in his fucking shirt. Mm-hmm. And they're blaming him for everything. No, 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 fucking no. Because because if you go through the logistics, a cop gets on the radio and he says, I've been shot. And the cops show up on the scene because he's in the fucking parking lot of the cop shop. So cops are the first on the scene. They would have been the guys who ripped his shirt open and said, how bad is it? Where's the bleeding? Where do I put the pressure? And they would have realized you ain't fucking shot. No, yep. a- no ambulance would have been fucking called. But no, an ambulance was fucking called. And the ambulance fucking showed up, and they picked this fucking guy up, and they took him to the fucking hospital. So what did the EMTs do? Did they open his shirt and say, where do we put the pressure? You've been shot. Where do we put pressure? No. They take him to the fucking hospital. Mm-hmm. And then the hospital officials make a fucking report. This is what pisses me off for people who don't believe that these things are staged and everyone's in mm-hmm. on it. Because yeah. now we got hospital officials now, now making I, I official know. fucking reports, Rufus. and they fucking say we was treated and released. Rufus, I was told I'm crazy to believe that everyone's in on it. Well, you what don't. If somebody told you that. And now we have the news, the journalists, the reporters, the investigators, the cops, the ambulance, the EMTs, the first responders, the hospital officials, and the police chief and the goddamn fucking mayor on they TV. And the they... goddamn fucking mayor on TV saying, I, yeah, I visited him in the hospital. He was in a lot of pain. So, is, so. Ev- is everybody in on it or not? Everybody's in on it. This is because what fucking pisses that's how me off. Bribery works. They pre plan this stuff. Contracts are signed. Blood oaths are taken. Yep. This is how Freemasonry works. Yep. Freemasonry is behind the EMT, the police, and all these positions of authority. Yep. Thank you, Amy. What's behind Freemasonry, though? Kabbalah. Rosicrucians, multiple networks. Oh, yeah. Okay. You know, the, the now we're getting is, into deep waters. Now I we're getting into deep I waters. Think, I think we don't know who's actually at the top. Oh, I don't think we ever right. see them. Deep they waters. Deep waters. Deep waters. I'm cutting it off, you guys. We're 10 o'clock my time. It's been three hours. Shit. Okay. Good. <laughs> actually, about two and a half because we had a false start and some. Uh, audio errors but amy a big shout out to josh love you bro thank you for joining us fellow man big shout out to you for hanging out with me thank uh, you man uh gandalf are you yeah still- buddy i'm going to do one thing before we all shut her down i'm going to be sharing the link <laughs> to where we're all heading over to on josh's channel yeah Everyone? we're going to we're going to plume serpent channel Everybody's going over to Plume Serpent. We're going to go hang out with Josh. So if you don't know Plume Serpent, Gandalf is going to leave a link. There it is. Thank you very much. Okay, so everyone click that link that I just dropped. We're moving over uh, to Josh's channel. Right Uh, on. So I I would like to talk to you when you shut this off. uh, Final thoughts, everybody. I'll talk to you briefly, but I'm going to Josh's after I go to the restroom. So I'll talk to you briefly. Okay, yeah. I just want to say something. So uh, final thoughts before I close this out. Love always. Don't trust the news. <laughs> Keep your mind open. 
Be good to each other and pick up your fucking trash. <laughs> All right. Peace, you guys. Love you. See you next time. All right.